more. Yeah. Oh, I was looking at the wrong camera. Hold on. Okay, wait. Uh, Uh, yeah. Well, uh, 10 to you. Can we do a mic check on you? You need to use the restroom or anything? You need to use the restroom or anything? Yeah. Alright, so that's you right there. Uh huh. Danny, Michael's gonna get on the mic and, and do the one twos, the one twos. You know what I'm gonna ask him? No, I don't know what you're gonna ask him. What are you gonna ask him? I'm not gonna tell you then. No. Alright. Uh, can you pull your... There you go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear Michael? I can, just a little bit. Is it not loud enough? No, you sound good now. You you only said like two words, so... Oh. <laughs> sure. So what are you going to ask um, So have you seen... Oh, All right, coming up. Stand by.
This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten We're your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is gonna be a little bit bumpy! <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Go. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long. Living the dream. We roll it! Yeah! Uh, Pacific still. The yeah. MMA Junkie Radio revolution Gym is probably. upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace yeah. and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio, commence transmission. <laughs> Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Cortis George and Go. From the fight capital of the world inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Racing Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me as always is the devious and dastardly Goes, our ace co-host, back east, handling all the producing duties. It's going to be Danny, of course. Rounding out the panel for today is the Bellator lightweight champion, Michael Chandler. What's up, bro? How you doing? What's up, guys? I'm doing great, man. Just uh, Where's the belt? a little Vegas trip. Oh, didn't bring it. Forgot yeah? To bring it. Should have okay. brought it. Yeah, it was your job. <laughs> you should have told yeah. me. <laughs> I didn't do it last time. I'm just throwing people under the bus <laughs> hey, to yeah. end the year, you know, because uh, 2017 is about hugs and he almost yeah, saying be, being kind to each other and all yeah. that. So these, these are the last couple of days to stab each other. Yeah, that's right. Get this Mess around what? and all that. Tell Danny's my witness, too. I'll throw Michael under the bus. What he threw you under the bus. He did? You were, you, this is probably the closest you've ever cut getting here for the that intro. That was close. And Michael said, how about I sit there and I do the intro? I was just going to wing it. That's balls, right? Yeah. From well, the beautiful Mandalay Bay Racing Sports Pretend book. I'm not here. No, I don't know what to say <laughs> yeah? at all. How would you start the show? How would you start the Chandler and Go show? Well, that's what I would have. Uh, I would have said something like that, but I wouldn't. It wouldn't roll off the tongue with the the Mandalay Bay Racing Sports book, devious and dastard. Danny, that you have any good, intro man. type of like a little beat or something? Here it comes. MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts. Gorgeous George and Goes. Broadcasting live from the Mandalay Bay Racing Sportsbook here at the beautiful Las Vegas. It's a beautiful day to be here at MMA Junkie Radio with Gorgeous George and the devious and dastardly Goes. That's pretty good. Who, who's back east? Who's producing the show today? And there's someone back east. We're not quite sure what his <laughs> name is again. You've been uh, chatting with him for 10 good. minutes. But we're, wow. but we're good. Uh, You've been chatting with him for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, I Danny, said his wow. name. Danny, there Danny, you go. I know. There you go. <laughs> we got a guy back east, and he's doing <laughs> something over there. There's a human being there's on the <laughs> east coast. <laughs> he's that's pressing doing buttons something. and making this whole thing work, but. <laughs> How's the chance you know, doing, uh, Danny? Uh, uh, I'm doing great, man. Does Just, it feel uh, good to... You know, 2016, everybody's complaining about, oh, my God, people died. I, I hear you. People die every year. Mm -hmm. It's been a bad year. It was, it was a great year for you. Yeah, it was a good year for me. Um, you know, a lot better than, you know, the previous ones before that, you know. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it was a great year. Um, back on top. Got a got a great fight a couple weeks week, couple weeks ago with Ben Henderson, who's a, a big name, big win. So. That was an awesome fight, man. Thank you. Yeah, and so it's uh it's great, man. And and here I am, you know, I'm, right now I'm in that lull, kind of lull between, between fight camps and, able to you know on a whim just buy some tickets to to las vegas and sit um sit cage i watched ufc 207 watching dom take it home and the return of ronda rousey so that's cool you guys are still homies i wasn't sure um after you you know moved to another mm -hmm. gym just who took it personal who was cool with it no no it was, yeah it, it was never like that man dominic is dominic will be a friend forever you know and uh you know, he knows that. I know that. I think. I think Dom and I. You know, it, it is really interesting, actually, with between me and Dom. I actually I moved to Alliance basically because I wanted to train with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, this guy does things right. This is like, this guy lives his life right, trains right. I want to learn from him mentally. I want to learn from him technique wise. And then uh, I fought Akihiro Gono, moved, and then he and and then 
was about to move to San Diego, and right, I think the weekend after I fought Akihiro Gono, he tore his ACL the first time. Oh, wow. So then the about the three years that I was at Alliance Training Center, we only worked out maybe 15 times in the three-year period because he was, you know, he just kept getting injured. And so him and I were – him and I were friends during that. I think that that time in his life, you know. But he I, came out this way too, right? Didn't you get some work in at uh, in Vegas? Yeah, in Vegas. Didn't uh, Dominic come out here with the whole team? Oh the yeah. Ultimate oh, fighter. so that was that. Was, so that was how the whole thing came about. Him, him and your I were doing the Ultimate Fighter here. I was living here, and then that's kind of how it all how it all came. And um, Gil Martinez actually was like, "Hey, man, these guys got you know Ross Pearson and Jeremy Stevens and this guy, that guy. You should go. Let's go spar with them." And you know, and it just turned out to be such a great situation. Um, and then, yeah, so it just kind of goes back to Dom and him going through that that dark time in his life where his whole life was taken from him almost, you know, like fighting his life. He eats, sleeps, and breathes his sport, and it was taken away from him. And, you know, I was there with him through it all and kind of, you know. Was we, Neil we there friends, already in San Diego at that time or not yet? Um, Who not got there yet. first? I got there first. And then okay. it was just a couple months later that Neil came out. I was, you know, I told Eric, and I was like, hey, man, this guy, he's the greatest coach in the world, you know, and then they hired him and. Now the rest is history, but right. Uh, that made Eric number two. If Neil's number one, well, I mean Eric was Eric was the I'm just the head. Joking. I'm just joking. Oh, <laughs> well, Eric was the head coach there, but right. I mean Neil was the the grapple like, because that's how coach, I would take. Yeah, I take things been personal. There. So if you told me <laughs> that's the greatest coach you get, I'm, I'm like, oh, God, that makes me number two. Well, I guess. In this, yeah. Well, in this, I mean, in this sport, there's numerous disciplines. You yeah, know? I mean, head a coach, ground coach, grappling coach, striking yeah, coach, a ground coach can't necessarily be known as the best coach in the world because he doesn't really know that much about striking or. As much as he should about striking, just and vice versa with the striking coach, you know. But what if Gil had said, "Hey, Uriah's in town. Let's go work out with them." I wonder if your life would have changed. It would have. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've always you liked may have Uriah too. With Mendez yeah. and oh man, Castillo I know. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I already do click with those guys. I mean, those. I think those guys are even more kind of my mold. You know, the all wrestler dudes, all you know, whatever. But so it was just kind of a. It was kind of an interesting thing. But I made my way to you know training with the Lions guys and. Um, yeah, I mean, it could have very well been, hey, let's go train over. I think they were training at Syndicate. Or no, I, don't know, I forget where they were training. Cobra they were, Kai? I don't know. They were training somewhere, and then Alliance, mm. Alliance was at Syndicate, sorry. So yeah. um, back when it was Throwdown. Right. Um, but, yeah, it, it just uh, it is funny how those little those little one decision or one phone call or one text message could have changed the you know the trajectory of my life. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Yeah. How about uh, how did you meet your wife? Is there a chance you could have oh, not gosh. met her? Man, I stalked her. Stalked her for like seven years. This was a, a, a years. dentist yeah. thing, right? It was a dentist thing. It was crazy. Well, yeah, did you I get mean, close to going to another dentist and maybe? No, I mean, l- luckily for me, it was it was all chance. I mean, I, I chipped this tooth, just broke it in half wrestling, and then the University of Missouri, who were were covered under you know their insurance if it gets hurt during a uh, wrestling match or whatever, they sent me to this this one guy, and I knew who he was. I knew his name. I knew his his uh, reputation around town. He was like a he was a leader in the community. He he was a mentor. He led a Bible study that my Bible study leader was at, so kind of like he was a mentor to my mentor. So I was, right. I knew he was a solid dude. And then I was sitting there in the waiting room with a chipped tooth, and uh, there's there was all these pictures of him and, and his family, know, his, his wife, his beautiful wife, and then there was this cute little brunette girl, and I was like, wow, is that his daughter? Mm-hmm. And uh, you wondered that, or you asked him? No, I wondered that. No, okay. I didn't ask him that. <laughs> I didn't ask him that. I was like, this guy's. I gotta wait till that appointment's over, right? Yeah, 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 no, you gotta wait. Yeah, wait till it's over. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, well, it'll be like drilling <laughs> with no <laughs> number cane or nothing. <laughs> and then, from, and then, by a bunch of series of events, I mean, I, I had five different numerous uh, or five different mutual friends of hers who were all awesome, solid people. So I knew, okay, if she rolls with this crowd, if she runs with this crew, she must be a pretty solid person. Mm-hmm. And years went by, and years went by, and I kept hearing about this girl, Bree Willett. Um, and stories, and I had been to her house because I'd been to a, I, yeah, <laughs> I had, yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. I had been to a, yeah, I had been to a, um, a birthday party there for someone else, and I was just like, man, this is this is that girl's house. Mm-hmm. But you didn't get to meet her. Never met her. No, T- she tell wasn't the there. truth. Did you go to that birthday party with the chance you might meet her? Or Absolutely. Was, or is that birthday Absolutely. party? Absolutely. She okay. knows that. She knows. Okay. That. I mean, I was, it was you know. It's borderline kind of creepy. Borderline, uh, you know, when, whenever you have something in your heart, and you, when, when you when something gets in your heart and your mind or your your soul, you're just like, there's an undeniable thing. Yeah. It's kind of like, man, why do I feel? Why do I feel like I should be doing this, or why do I feel like I should go in that direction, or why do I feel like I should have a crush on this girl? And I was just kind of, it was just go, it was a crazy thing. And when did you finally, finally meet her at that party? No, no, that was four years later. I finally. Uh, Dear God, how long was, was this process? It was a long process? time. It was a seven, yeah, I mean, a seven year process. For seven years from the moment you went, oh, that brunette's cute, yeah. to actually meeting her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
And I had, I mean, it wasn't like I was sitting there, you know, like, oh, hopefully I meet yeah. her someday. You know, I mean, she was going about her life. Oh, she didn't even know who I was, but I was going about my life, and yeah. I, I had dated other people, and, um, you know, I think. Uh, so how did finally, how did fin- you finally meet her? Finally, you know, uh, Facebook, luckily. You know, we were, I was, uh, we I'm were, starting to we get were mad. mutual friends. So after all of this, it was just Facebook, Facebook was what tied you guys together? Well, it you, was one you of added her as a friend, or did no, you comment? We, well, like, luckily, we have a mutual no, friend, your luckily, dad and my dad. <laughs> luckily, we, <laughs> He's were already, selfies in luckily we were already friends. So at some point in the time, I had like finally hit the request button, you know, and then we had 10 different mutual friends where she was like, okay, the, all these, if he's friends with all these people, then we should be, you know, he should be at least all right. And then finally I was just like, hey, how are things? Acting like I knew her, you uh-huh. know, <laughs> and almost like tricked her into thinking, wait, mm-hmm. do I know this guy? Right. Okay, I'll start a conversation. But then the worst part about it was it wasn't a, it, it took a year and a half from the time that I messaged her to her to finally go on a <laughs> coffee date with me. <laughs> She's the worst in the entire hey, world. Hey, how are things? She replied a year and a half later? Oh, no, no. She she would respond about uh, a month later. Oh, okay. And then I would get it, and I would respond right back to her. And then she would respond three months later. Really? And then she would respond two months later. And then I'm like, hey, you know, how about some ice cream sometime? Hey, how about some coffee sometime? And that right there was my that right there was my, my saving grace, the fact that I was so persistent. persistent for so long. She's like, all right. Cause she she was done. She's like, I'm not I'm not gonna meet a guy here. I'm not gonna meet. You know, she was just like she was focused on school. She was, uh, um, you know, she was going to PA school. You know, so she was focused on herself, focused on her career. And then here I am trying to like insert myself into it. You know, and right. she's going through an 80 hour a week. Is your residency. profile picture got the belt or anything like no. that? No. Well, that was the problem too. She didn't. She had never watched a fight. She okay. never knew what fighting. Well, she knew what fighting was, but she never really watched it. Wasn't a fan of it. So she probably just thought I was this. You know, your typical. You know, I mean, meathead. The, yeah, meathead. But I mean, I would I would have to say that the the pool of the guys and gals that we have in the sport now is is definitely a little bit more refined and a little bit more you know a little bit less rugged than it, it used to be. You know, mm-hmm. so but to the average person, you got a like, problem with Tank Abbott and all those guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So okay, exactly. When she finally said, "All right, let's go out uh, for coffee," what when you guys finally clicked? What did she tell you was the reasoning why she waited so long? Well, I mean, well, number one, it was just. She wanted to make. She wanted to, if I was if I was worth pursuing, or if it was worth it for her to let me pursue her, um, I would need to prove that I was you know kind of willing to put in the work. You know, number one, number two. I think. I mean, she really was just focused on. She really could could have cared less. You know, the chances of me and her going to coffee together, her falling in love with me right there at Caldy's Coffee like she did. Five minutes into our our date, she told you that. No, but oh. that's what I always tell her. Mm-hmm. I just remember when she was doing this, and she was tell me more. <laughs> when did you break out the <laughs> the world champ line? Uh, she. I mean, it, it got brought up in that conversation. I mean, I'm sure she probably just she knew. I'm sure you know. I don't know. Google it or whatever. And um, yeah, I don't know, man. It was just. Uh, did she happen great. to accept the date after you beat Alvarez? Uh, yeah, it okay. was right after the Akihiro Gono fight. Literally right after we, I fought Akihiro Gono January 9th or something, and our first date was January 24th. Mm. So I was fresh off of a victory. Didn't get beat up in the fight. Luckily, I didn't even take a hit. You know, mm. it was like a one minute knockout. So can can we? I'm a creepy guy, so okay, I like good. I like I'm creepy this. too, man. <laughs> Let's go back to the house, okay? <laughs> so. The house was a recon mission, George. You know that, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of things did you do? Because if, if it's me, I'm kind of looking at the photos, uh-huh. and then I'm taking a lot of bathroom breaks and hoping that a door's open so I can go, all right, uh-huh. that's a room. She likes unicorns, that uh-huh. sort of thing. Like, how far did you go on all this? No, I mean, I didn't. I didn't go very far. I mean, I mean, one thing I will say that was kind of creepy or, or just kind of, I don't know, man. I, he has a, a pond in his backyard. I didn't even see what's on the DVR. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, why that? not? Like, so go, hey, can somebody turn it up and then hit the DVR and then go, oh, okay, she likes the first 48. Cool. And then you bring that up later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we do love the first 48. Yeah, uh, it's one of our things. <laughs> um, but he had a, a pond in his backyard, and I was like, man, someday I'm going to be fishing in this backyard. I told myself that, yeah? which is kind of creepy for a girl you never met before. And then now I'm, yeah, yeah, now I'm, now I'm fishing in, in her backyard. And she still doesn't know if I'm a serial killer or not. But so it's not creepy out. once he gets it done. Once he gets it once done, you, it's yeah, just once you get it do- yeah, once you get it done, you're like, wow, it all now makes, it all makes sense persistent. now. All that craziness and like, you know, because for a while you second guess yourself. You're like, dude, okay, you don't even know her. Why do you? Why do you think that you're? You know, why do you even think you have a, have a chance with her? And then, thank God, finally. How long have you been married? A couple years now. We'll be married uh, three. Yeah, three years. In September. September. You remember mm-hmm. the date? September sixth. Okay. I always get it mixed up. See, it's either September sixth or September 9th. But, <laughs> but she doesn't. But you have the excuse, <laughs> hey man. Yeah, I got well, it for like, a living. Well, it's like, yeah. Well, no. It's, if if it's it's nine six or 
six nine you know what i'm saying right right nine is september but anyways Right. So that's my uh, that's my backstory. Getting to know a little bit about Chandler's <coughs> yeah. personal side there. So moral of the story is it's okay to stalk somebody if you really, really like them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you took a chance. You rolled the dice for seven years. Some other guy could have been in there and, like, you know, yeah. scooped her up or whatever. Well, that's – I mean, lucky, luckily for me, I mean, she dated guys, you know, and, and she always just said – I mean, and it's kind of cool. You could see uh, – you could see it in the in the last in camp that they did. They kind of sat her down and Bellator sat her down, and she just talked about like she kind of gets teary eyed because she she basically talk, talks about I never thought that I would <coughs> basically find somebody who could compare to what she wanted in a in a in a man, you know. Mm -hmm. So luckily for me, all the all the wrong guys just kept coming coming on through. And you never told the dentist like as a joke after you know a few years like your daughter's cute, you know. Like anything. Well, I mean, unfortunately, like. The University of Missouri will just send you to like five different dentists. I don't oh. think I ever. I don't think I ever went. Uh, I don't think I ever went back to him at, to, for dentistry work at all. You know, maybe I saw him at a at a certain function here or there, but um, never really went back for. Dentist. Do you think he just would have brushed you off? Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. In you know, twenty years, whenever I have a a cute little daughter, and there's guys like, I don't know how I'm how I'm going to take that. You know, mm. we'll see. I mean. Because you can't really judge a man's character by. Plus, you can't you go in there flapping him. your gums, you know, no. day one, yeah. and making comments. <laughs> yeah, right? You got to scale it down a little bit. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Can't just be checking DVRs and all kinds of stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Creeper. All right. So listen, tonight, folks. Tonight is UFC 207. I know it's a Friday and not a Saturday, but they uh, they just they've never done it. They don't like to go against New Year's Eve, um, so that's why they're pushing things up one day. 4.30 p.m. Pacific, so 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. There's one fight on Fight Pass, and then you move on to uh, Fox Sports 1. Four fights coming your way there at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and then at 10 p.m. Eastern time, it'll be UFC 207 headlined by Amanda Nunez and Ronda Rousey. One of the fighters from that fight card will be calling in uh, in the first hour. His name's Tim Means, and the reason he's doing it is because he it's gotten to him that fighters who do this show on the day of their fight are... Why did I start that? 59? No. 55 and 13. 55 and, uh, 55 and 14. Wow. 79%. We call it junkie karma. Junkie so karma. So if you're ever fighting a fight week during during the fight week. Let's do that. For you got to do it. Yeah. King okay. Moe's done it. Cowboy go. Cerrone's done it. Well, there's Martin's a lot of them, right? Fighters who send us gift cards on the day of their fight. I think they're like 95%. Yeah. Something like that. So there's all kinds of them. <laughs> so yeah, so so Tim Means realizes this, and uh, unless he sleeps through the phone call, he'll be on the show. He's fighting Alex Oliveira. It'll be quick. We'll give him some junky karma, and then he'll be on his way. And uh, we might have a few other fighters stop by later on in the show, but we haven't locked them in yet, so we won't uh, we won't jinx it. Chandler's co-hosting with us. We'll get a couple predictions out of him. We'll see what's next for him in his career. We also want to take your calls at eight six six five two 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 eight four six. That's eight six six five two 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 eight four six. And I'll also be looking at YouTube. And Facebook, if you want to contribute in that manner, it's facebook.com forward slash MMA Junkie Official. Sorry, official MMA Junkie. Holy cow. And youtube.com forward slash MMA Junkie Video. Um, tell me something about Dominic Cruz that most people wouldn't know. Like, it, it mm. will, you've been over to his house. Man, uh, a, he's been over to your house. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, we had him over for din well, <laughs> a fake dinner the other night. You know, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Bree and I. Well, he couldn't really eat, you know. He, uh -oh. you know, it's it was the week before his fight, so I'm sure he he had, he had just eaten I don't know quinoa and eggs or whatever whatever he said he had out out of his Tupperware. But we we were making dinner, and but we invited him over. We had a little Christmas gift for him. And um, did he bring dojo? He did bring dojo. And my, he's kind my, of attached to dojo, right? Oh no, dojo's his dojo's his his role dog. Man. Yeah, dojo's he got like, him the service dog deal. Yeah. they're at the mall together. He's carrying mm -hmm. him. I watched him on embedded. I'm yeah, he's on UFC embedded. That might be a bit much for me. I love my dog, mm -hmm. but. Um, I, I I don't know that I'd roll with him everywhere. I'm, I'm not trying to be Paris Hilton, and I'm yeah. not saying he's that. Actually, I am. Yeah, he's kind I of being Paris Hilton a little, isn't he? Well, I think he has a I think he has a good balance. You yeah. know, I I mean, there's times where I mean, the time before that when he came over a couple weeks before, he didn't bring Dojo, but oh, good to hear know, that. All right, but he's yeah. I mean, it's not always like oh, here's Dom, man. He's got Dojo. Yeah, you know, it's he uh, looks like a cool dog though. No, I'll he give he that. is he's good. And he's Does very he get he's along a very with your crew? <laughs> with my crew. Yeah, because yeah, he got like three, right? Yeah, I got three pugs. So um, yeah, he does. I mean. Our our youngest one got a little bit uh, jealous because he's he, he wants to be the the center of attention and, and Dojo's nice and soft so I was picking him up and playing with him and stuff but uh, I mean I think it's uh he he's a very good disciplined dog Dom Dom's done a very good job of disciplining him he knows his place you know I hate when people don't 
discipline their dogs and their dogs are just going nuts and going crazy and they have no, you know, pooping and peeing and biting and barking and doing all kinds of stuff. But <laughs> Doja's a good dog. Uh, but what, something about Dominic that most yeah, people don't know. Like, well, it is fight week, so I don't want to get too too sentimental, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I would say there's – I think there's a side of Dominic. I think Dominic is one of the most – I think Dominic's one of the most genuine, real people. Um and honestly, kind-hearted and almost soft-hearted type of guy too. You know, he's we we always see him as a Fox analyst where we just see his brain going a million miles an hour, and we're just wowed by how how smart he is on the mic. And then we see him the last three days making Cody Garbrandt want to literally kill him, mm-hmm. you know, and because he can get under your skin. But he's also just, you know, he's he's a very loyal, awesome just dude. And, and it's anybody who gets to know him as a person, as a, as a friend, is uh, you know, he's he's gold, you know. Um, but he does a lot of pool workouts too. Pool workouts. Pool workouts. Oh, see, I didn't he's know that pool. about him. There you go. He's got a pool. In his, he's got a pool in his backyard. Um, you saw on the embedded. He he talked about he got fitted for a new bicycle and whatnot. Yes. And when you tear your ACL three or four times Looked or whatever, like a pretty damn cool bike too. Yeah, it was a cool bike. So you know, when you tear your ACL that many times, you got to find different ways to train. You know, and um, I think pool work, pool workouts, and uh, you ever done a pool workout with him? I haven't done one with him. I did. I did. I came over to his house one day, and he's like, oh, "I'm about to do a pool workout." I'm like, "All right, I'm not doing a pool workout. I'm just gonna sit here. We'll talk while you do it." <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So he's got. He's got like the, you know, not you know, like the how the old people have the, the mm-hmm. the, the the those things or whatever. And the but he gets after it. And he'll tread water for like an hour straight. Really? So, pretty much. Wow. You a good swimmer? No. No. Well, I'm average. What workout if do I had you to, hate? Um, besides all my MMA training. <laughs> um. <laughs> Besides sparring What's and the wrestling, worst and one? Uh, man, for me, I I dislike. Uh, you know what an airdyne is? Yeah, the, the bike. Airdyne, I don't know why I hate, I hate that too. You you know what I'm talking about? They're yeah, so that's how bad. we warm up. You guys do those at the at the what's it called? Ofit or uh, Omalva? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Those are the worst because it's it's a, it's a full body. You know, it's a full body workout. And, and it's, if you're doing it for a warm up, it's nice because it's a full body thing. But most of the time, there's like sprints involved you know and in college wrestling we used to do you know you had to keep it at a certain rpms for x amount of you know seconds and then you then you could go back down to your working pace which is less and it's you'd literally die you know and uh that's probably the toughest workouts so when you hate them but you love them because you know they get you prepared for your fights so 866-522-2846. 866-522-2846. we're gonna take a couple calls right now i do want to give a shout out to lucas lavolt he recommended a, a show to me called The 7-5. It's about dirty New York City cops. You want to check that out? Uh, I already have it locked and loaded. I'm going to check it out this weekend. He's from France, goes. Oh, and cool. also, Sean, a.k.a. Windrun. Uh, I just answered an old email as I was catching up from uh, emails, you know, when we had the days off regarding Mar Ranallo, Roy McDonald. just took me a while to get to him. But uh, thanks for writing me, Sean. And sorry, I got, it took me forever to get back to you. Same with Nick. From Vancouver, we were talking about Ellenberger back in August, and I just barely got to my replies. Uh, I do the same thing. I wait like a month, and the next time I wait like three months. I make them work for my love. John Wilkes Booth and Lady Wilkes Booth, thank you for the package you guys sent us. Some delicious cookies, but, man, you guys are killing me, man. This, the, you know, I, I subscribe to a, a waste is a terrible thing to mind, but it's getting out of control. So I, I really have to buy, button things down in 2017, but those cookies are delicious. Kendra and Mike. Also, uh, th- they sent us uh, some Christmas gifts as well. Yeah, and uh, don't forget Cupcake Katie. Cupcake Katie and Hal from Chicago sent us some pizzas. Some pizzas, yes. From and also Tony, Tony from San Francisco. Tony sent so us Chipotle. thank you for everybody oh. for sending these, these cool things, these cool gifts, uh, the messages, the cards. We got them all, and I'm Jeff sorry it took, us, it took us a while to, to – give you your shout outs and, and give you your thanks i know you don't do it for that but still it means a lot to us let's talk to proteus in ontario canada what's up proteus what's up fellas how you doing man my best no time impression i'm doing good i'm doing good hey uh mr chandler nice to have you in the studio yet again yes sir. um want to give a shout out to uh my co-host sitting in the studio with you as well what's up guys um hey happy new year guys it's been a wonderful year it's junkie nation in our lives yet again I uh, just wanted to call in, say Happy New Year. And you guys got a great card of fights coming up this evening. I hope you guys really, really enjoy them. And, um, you know, one thing I wanted to say, and I'm sure you've talked about it to nauseam on, on the, the show this week, but seriously, what is up with Ronda Rousey's headspace, guys? Let's, let's have a little chat about that. Because seriously, it's bothering me. I mean, I hear, I hear uh, um, 
John and cold coffee on the on the podcast this this afternoon and I mean, you know, it, it's getting to some people. So what, what's the point of view from you guys? What what do you think about yesterday's events at the weigh-ins? I mean, I, I've said it before, but I just feel like everything she's doing points to this is her last fight, win or lose. Because right. uh, you just, you don't want to set that precedent precedence for yourself, right? You want to be able to, you should be able to talk to me. You should be able to talk about the fight. You should be able to sign autographs, take pictures, all that. That's part of being a fighter. Um, right now she's not doing it. I think she's doing it because she knows this is the last one. She wants to be as focused as possible. And, uh, who knows? Maybe she wins and she sticks around, but I honestly think this is her last fight. I think she's an extremist. And when she got knocked out, she told herself, okay, I spread myself too thin and now I'm going to be selfish and it's going to be all about me. Not one fan's going to get an autograph. Not, no media is going to do, I'm going to do zero media. I think the UFC said, look, we're going to give you this pass because you've done so much for us but you got to do a couple at least do the big dogs like ellen she's got some issue you know, their buddies or whatever mm -hmm. maybe kimmel whatever but you, you have to help us out a little bit and that's it we'll we'll keep you away from the mma media that's gonna you know sift through all the facts and stuff about your your fighting career and your why you're with your coach and your mom you know ellen mm -hmm. just tosses the softballs yeah. how are you doing you know yeah. you ready to fight and all that stuff but uh, <laughs> so so i think that's what she did um, she, I don't think from one day to the next she just hates her fans. She's great with her fans. You can call her moody and other things, but when it comes to the fans, she's great with them. Now, I've heard the interaction she's had in Vegas is, sorry, but I'm, I am focused on my fight. I want to save all my energy to, for my fight. So I, I think she just decided if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it all the way from start to finish. Just me, uh, you know, 180-degree turn, and, and that's why she's doing it. I think if she wins, she stays. If she loses, I have a bet with Goes that I still think she stays because I think she'd want to still fight Holly Holm. I don't know why. I think that burns her. But when have you heard her ask for that fight? She's talked about how much yeah. it sucks, but when have we actually heard her say, I want that one back and I want it She hasn't it said it, she but... She doesn't really talk about it, yeah, right? Yeah, you're right. I think that's her poison, man. I well, either way, our, our, our bet is her. whether she retires or not off the win or the loss, right? right? Yeah, I'm just, I just think she'll stick around. She, she also said fighting's in my blood. That's what I do. That was born to fight or something. So I, I, you know, there's, I don't know. Anyway, that's what I think, Proteus. What do you think about Ronda Rousey? I mean, you're a world <coughs> champion. You're program. You guys are programmed a certain way, man. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think you used. I think you used the right word, extremist. You know, she kind of. Uh, this this life isn't easy as a, as a mixed martial artist to have balance. You know, and and she did it. I think yeah. she did a masterful job for years with the ho with all the stuff she. I mean, the stuff that she's had to to uh, negotiate through with when it comes to all the media and the press and the Hollywood and the fights and this and that is so much more than a lot of us guys have. Um, but what I will say is, is I was in her position. You know, I was 12-0, and 0, extremely dominant, a ton of first-round finishes. Then all of a sudden you have that first loss, and then all of a sudden the doubts start to creep in. And then all of a sudden you do an interview and someone reminds you of how you got knocked out. And then you do another interview and then they, they say – you know, you were so down for so long. How does it feel to be a, a loser? You know, and that's all you hear when you, whenever you do an interview. That's all you hear. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's all you hear. You're reminded. You're constantly reminded. And and when you're in that position where you need to get yourself built back up, and you need, in, you're in that position where you need, on, you need to dwell on only the positive and only the, only the good things in your life. Sometimes doing an interview isn't isn't the easiest thing. You know, now it's easy for me to talk about my losses. But when I had that first loss and I was doubting myself because I had my first loss and then I had a second loss and I had my third loss. It was like a snowball effect. So I think she's protecting herself. Um, I think she's by no means done with the sport. Um, and, uh, you know, and everyone keeps doing the, oh, well, Connor caught, you know, got kicked off UFC 200 because he wouldn't do the media and blah, blah, blah. So everyone kind of compares each other to everyone. But like you said, Ronda's done a ton for this sport. And uh, if she only wants to do the Ellens and the, the, the Jimmy Kimmels and, and that kind of stuff, that's only even good. That's the only better for the sport, too, because they are going to give you softball questions and they're going to give you – you know, positive um, questions, and even the one where she was on Ellen and almost kind of started crying. It was that was kind of her, you know, her acceptance part, one of her her stages of grief. But um, I think she's by no means done, and I'm I'm rooting for her tonight. So yeah. And that said, Proteus, I still think she handled it wrong. I think the way Connor handled it was the best. He just showed up to the press conference in a suit, gave praise to the opponent, talked about how he messed up, and he fixed it. You know, and I, I think that mm -hmm. began the grieving process, honestly. That's therapy uh, of he was, sorts. He was, ve he was very classy, and he waited a few months, and then he started talking smack, how he's going to beat up Nate Diaz in part two and things like that. But mm -hmm. um, everyone's different, brother. 
Thanks for the call, man. Thanks for participating in today's show. You're a great caller, Proteus. We look forward to more in 2017, but we got to move on to Jack in Seattle. What's up, Jack? What's up, Gold? What's up, Goldfish? And uh, hey, Chandler, how's it going? What's up? How are you? Uh, good. Uh, congratulations to all your success, man. It's uh, really amazing how you're able to, you know, just talking about your first loss, you can just regain and become champion again and be the guy like uh, Benson Henderson, who is considered, you know, uh, pound for pound, like one of the best fighters in the world. Thank you, man. I, r I really appreciate that. Uh, and I got a uh, congratulations again. It sounds like your wife uh, must she must be ex uh, extremely beautiful because that's a lot of work you put in. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, it was a lot of work, but yeah, it was worth it, man. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, I don't know. I had it in yeah. my head and just kept pursuing it. And here I am, married to the woman of my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Because you know, I'm. I just hit 35, and my New Year's resolution uh, uh, is go. I'm going to go ugly. I just want to go really ugly, so it's a lot easier, and I don't have to deal with all this headache. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Don't do yeah, it. You're, you're lowering the bar. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 217 in 2017. You can do it, uh, GG. Skinny coming. I believe in you, man. All, all right, right, bro. Still talking all right. about the girls. Good to hear you, man. <laughs> all right, we'll see you. Is he going to try and weigh 217 in 2017? Or that's no, he was telling those you. Those are the girls he's chasing? I thought he was saying, I'm just going to, you know, fish in the small pond. and. Uh, gotcha. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that is what he meant. Marco and Waco, what's up, man? Marco from Waco Road, que pasa datos a Michael Chandler. Hey. Hey, Michael, when you were talking about how you met your wife, I was thinking about the movie. Are you trying to piece a, a second person of how I met your mother, dude? How, how <laughs> I met your mother? mother? Yeah. That was a long process. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? No, I, I haven't. Is that a, that's a TV show, right? It is. Yeah, I, I don't watch it, but I've, I've seen a couple clips and whatnot. It's a pretty funny show. It, it's ba he basically went at least a good seven seasons, which equals your seven years, yeah. and he's telling his kids stories of how he, you know, met this girl and that girl or whatever, but along the way, he's also telling the story of how he got to his wife. Uh -huh. That's actually a pretty good analogy, Mark. Yeah, because they were go. sort of in the same place, <coughs> but different times. And so, yeah. Very close, sense. yeah. I was in her hometown for seven years, but she was off to college, and so, but very close. There you go. I like it. Like I said, you can piss a sickle, man. I start making money that way. Hey. <laughs> uh, you've been done already. Um, I'm Ronda Rousey, man. And I, you know what? A lot of people are, are barking about the way she's been on the media and not talking to anybody. But I keep saying that this whole scene, uh, you know, publicity-wise, has dr drive itself out there because ESPN is talking about it, the Today Show is talking about it. The whole media is talking about it because that is the, that is the story that she's not talking to anybody. And in a weird <laughs> way, it's created high for this story because Ronda is not talking. Everybody's even more curious what is going to happen tonight. Yeah. So, again, in a, in a funny weird way, in, intentionally or unintentionally, <laughs> It served the purpose to sell the fire, and I'm really intrigued. I still think Hunger Ronda is going to do what Ronda uh, in the past day, you know, because people forgot who the fuck Ronda Rouse is, and before Holly Hunt, she was just merking bitches. So, you know, Ronda all the <laughs> way. Was, really yeah, merking bitches. She was. All right. All right. Thanks, Marco. I, I agree <laughs> with that, too. You know, I mean, there is, there is that mystique about this fight because nobody's heard from her. I mean, right. the face-off, she goes up, boom, and then walks off. And they're almost in. sold out. And yeah. who knows what it may happen to the pay-per-views. I was shocked when I heard almost sold out because we hadn't gotten that vibe in the city that it was fight week. Yeah. It's different with T-Mobile. When, they're, when they're at MGM or Mandalay Bay, and I'm kind of copying a little bit of something Luke Thomas said, but I realize it because I'm in a, a sports book. When it's fight week here, you feel it. When it's fight week even at MGM, you kind of feel it. It's fight week. It helps that the fighters are kind of within the hotel and the promotions within the hotel. But this T-Mobile, it being off kind of on its own, I think it spreads everyone out a little bit. You know, yeah. Maybe that's why I haven't gotten the feeling that it's fight week. I, I do that. now because we have a lot of listeners here that are going <laughs> to the fights. You know, Things are amping up here for the weekend. People are flying in. I'm watching social media. But before that, I was like, Jesus, is this thing going to do good? Are they going to comp tickets, tweet tickets? What's the deal? Then yeah. I find out there's only standing room only. That's yeah. 20,000 souls that fit in there. Yeah. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's Ronda Rousey. You know, I mean, she's 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 got a uh, a fan base that transcends just just the MMA fan base, too, you know. and Can you imagine if she goes over a million pay-per-views with no media? That's going to be like but it is one of those. But it is you know one of those things. By doing no media, it kind of is a ton of media, you know, like not ton of media, but we, we're all talking about the fact that she's right. That we, that we have that she hasn't here's talked. A, here's the reach on my think part. It is. Do you remember when George St. Pierre came out and he had nothing on? Oh, yeah, when he was the first guy without sponsors, right. you're saying? But the story oh. behind it was, and everybody had to find out, like, why did he do that? Because it was a mystery behind it. 
affliction paid him to not wear anything, right? Yeah. And so you go in there, and there could that could have been the first time someone said, well, what's affliction? Went on to affliction and then became a, a consumer of their mm-hmm. brand or whatever. So I don't know if that was genius on their part or if they were just rolling with the times at that time. But, again, you may be interesting in the, interested in the fight just because of the way – she hasn't promoted it. As weird as that may sound, well, this is fascinating to me. This girl's doing no media. What's the deal? I hope she gets knocked out. I'm tuning in. I hope she uh, shoves it in the media's face and she wins. But either way, someone's buying that pay-per-view. Yeah. Well, and, and, and there is two opposite schools of thought. One is com- promote the heck out of the fight and tell everybody what you're going to do and this and that and how you've come back from this from this loss and you're in a great, great mental state and you're this, that, and the other thing. But she hasn't done any of that. So she – She's leaving it up to all of us to paint the picture. And your picture is We're different than it. my picture, and his picture is different <laughs> than everyone else. You know, I feel so negative. Yeah, you, I think I'm a negative person. Because what I'm thinking when you guys are talking <coughs> is, hey, guys, it's New Year's Eve. This mm-hmm. place is always packed at New Year's Eve. Yeah. And that's probably a big reason why people are saying, while we get our drink on New Year's Eve, wouldn't it be nice to go to a fight before? Yeah. And then if you come back and you find out she did sell over a million, if I'm her manager, what I'm thinking is, well, if you would have done media, maybe you could have gone over too. That's true. But see, I, I, th- I think – we're going to be surprised because I think everyone loves a comeback story. There's, there's half, the, half the people want to see Ronda. I mean, a lot of people don't like her because of, I don't know, the way she is. But then there's a lot of people like I'm on the other side of the coin where I want to, I don't want, I want to see her comeback story. I want to see her come back and I want to see her be dominant and win, you know. But then there's a lot of people who want to see her, her fail. And then the fact that she's not doing any media makes her, makes people want her to fail even more, you know. So it's a, it's interesting. Can You're I'm listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We're going to take this break, our only break of the first hour. Give us a few minutes. We'll be right back. Goes, you'll, we'll start off with your take. Okay, George. We'll be right back.
know. But he also went dumb. Starts knocking dudes out. <clears throat> One guy gave himself a nickname to score chicks, and the other is George. Together, they form MMA Junkie Radio. Now listen up and learn something, will ya? Ronda Rousey makes her long-anticipated return to the Octagon tonight when she takes on women's bantamweight champion Amanda Nunes at UFC 207 in Las Vegas, and Sirius XM Rush has you covered. Get an in-depth preview of the entire card starting tonight at 5 Eastern with Sirius XM's UFC 207 pre-fight live. Then stay locked to Sirius uh, Sirius XM uh, Rush 93 after the fight for a pull, full post-fight reaction and analysis exclusively on your home for combat sports and entertainment. Sirius XM Rush Channel 93 and on your phone with the Sirius XM app. All right, joining us now on the uh, hotline there on the VIP line is Tim Means. Tim is going to be mixing it up today. Today. It's not tomorrow, folks. I got to keep reminding you. It's today. Goes when is it? Today. Today is UFC 207. Nunes versus Rousey is your headliner. It is a pay-per-view. And there's also fights scattered throughout. Fox Sports 1. That's your prelims with uh, Johnny Hendricks and Neil Magny in that main slot. But there's also one on the UFC Fight Pass that you got to check out because both of these guys move forward. They don't move in reverse. It's Tim Means versus Alex Oliveira. And fighters who do this show on the day of their fight are 55 and 14. Tim Means is looking to take it to 56 and 14. We call it Junkie Karma. What's up, Tim Means? How you doing? I'm doing good. How you guys? Good. I'm glad you're doing the show today, not just because of the Junkie Karma, but I feel like we've talked to you for e before every fight for like the last five or six, man. So it, it's kind of been a little bit of a tradition for us. And, and uh, after you kind of came to our studio, a lot of our listeners became your fans. So thanks for making time for us. Yeah, thanks for making time for me, man. It's cool. All right, so I also got Goes here with me and Bellator lightweight champion Michael Chandler. Um, listen, we'll keep it short. I just want to ask you, fight week, I, I, when you woke up today, what was the first thing you thought of? Was it the fight, or are you just pushing all those thoughts away, and is your mind on, on other stuff? Um, you know, man, didn't, it's just another day. You know, woke up, ate some food, and had some coffee, and, you know, just kind of waiting it out right now. I fight super early, which is cool, so... Uh, in just a few hours, I'll be done and, and, and enjoying the green room and the food that they uh, prepare us downstairs. So um, I'm a little excited right now. Butterflies all at the same time. So just a normal day. Damn, man, you're a mean son of a bitch, too, from a <laughs> rough town that's called Albuquerque. It, it shocks me that these fighters, as badass as they are, get the nerves. But the best do. Michael, you probably get nerves, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, day, yeah. I've heard it a lot, and it's I think they're healthy nerves. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm glad you have some nerves because if you didn't, Tim, then I think you'd be some sort of a walking zombie or something. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a serial killer or something. I'm not really sure, you know. Jesus but, uh, Christ! Don't say that. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't invite you in our studio anymore. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I I can be I can be good when I have butterflies in the morning. You know, by the time I get my hands taped, all that stuff's gone. You know, so it's something that I welcome and. Uh, I, I look forward to so. Yeah. Uh, Tim Means, our guest here on MMA Chunky Radio, fights Alex Oliveira tonight at uh, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific on the UFC Fight Pass. Check it out. It's the only fight on Fight Pass. It's going to be a good one, though. And you can follow Tim on Twitter at Means. Tim, goes, what do you have for Tim Means? Tim, your last uh, four wins were all finishes. How important is it to keep that little streak going, or is a win just a win for you? Um, at this point, a win's just a win. It's only my second fight this year. You know, everyone knows, knows what the USADA deal I had to deal with. But um, right now, it's right after the holidays, and you have that built-up animosity and all that stuff. So I'm just looking to get into a fist fight. Been looking forward to it. Um, year's been a, been a tough year, man. So you know, I'm looking I'm looking forward to slapping Oliver tonight. <laughs> are you on the first plane out as normal uh, the next day, or are you going to stick around for the madness that is New Year's Eve out here in Vegas? Uh, yeah, man, my wife talked me into staying an extra day because I, I, it's usually just business for me. I, I fight and then leave right away. You know, I like leaving with money in my pocket and not giving nothing back. So, um, you know, we're going to stick around for that extra day. I got a room and, uh, you know, we're going to check out the festivities and then get back home, you know. Hey, when you say slip, what, what's your version of slap? Every city seems to have a slap. Is yours the open hand? You're going to slap them or is it a pimp hand coming backwards? 
Um, I like both those, but, you know, if you check out my last fight with Sabal, I slapped him a few times. So, you know, open hand, open hand, my mom taught me how to how to slap. So, uh, you know, it, it seems to get people's attention, and it it, 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 uh, it changes their, their want to to fight, you know. So right. um, something about a slap gets people's soul, you know. So let's get this straight. This was when you were a kid. She taught you how to defend yourself. She said, listen, this is your go-to move. Let me show you the slap. No, she just slapped me a few times oh. whenever I'd be a smart mouth, you know, so she taught me that slapping word. <laughs> oh, all right. Was it just hand connecting to the face, or did she drive it down? Like, uh, who was it goes? Rick James? Yeah, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Did you ever catch that episode? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a, a Rick James type of slap, you know. She, uh, she wanted to make sure she got my attention, and she did. A lot of people watch... Friends and family, they watch the fight at home, the viewing parties. You guys, are they doing that again? Or is, it's kind of a tradition as well, right? Yeah, I got by. My parents are actually in town now, you know what I mean? So I have to go out there and, and, and throw down or, you know, uh, my family will let me hear it if I, if I slack at all, you know. So uh, I just got to get in. I got the family and friends watching back home. I got my parents in town here, and, uh, you know, it's going to go for it. Hey, man, you bring it. I really enjoy watching you fight. I can't wait to see your fight tonight. We'll cut it short today, but seriously, you have a lot of fans here at Junkie Nation. Thank you for your time, for doing the show today. Good luck tonight. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, take care. Tim always delivers, man. And the other he cowboy, does. Alex Oliveira, he's a fun fighter, too. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Tim, Tim uh, he, he's one of those guys. He's a scrapper. You know, he, he uses the word fist fight. He uses the word smack. I mean, he's a, he's a gritty dude, and I, I – uh, I shared a locker room with him. I cornered Miles Jury, and I forget. I don't know if it was in Canada against Mike Ricci or if it was somewhere else, um, but I shared a locker room with him, and I was watching him warm up, man. It was, and it was something to behold. The dude is that, – that tenacity that you see in that cage, you know, that kind of street fighter come up, coming forward, you know, coming for your throat type of mentality, I, I saw that in that warm up because it was my first – I think it was my first experience seeing him. I didn't really right. know who he was. I was like, man, this dude – this dude's no joke. Went out there and just beat the crap out of somebody. Um, so I've been a fan of him for a long time. So if I was a bad guy and I needed a collector, he's one of the guys I'd call. <laughs> he's the guy. Him, Alex uh, yeah. Emelianenko. There's yeah. just a few guys that have that look. Chuck Liddell, he's got mm -hmm. a look too, but they just seem scrappy and tough. You know what I mean? And you know, I mean, like you said, you know, he comes from a from a tough city. You know, uh, um, not an easy not an easy background. You know, so so for a guy like him to be able to have this avenue to to provide for his wife and I don't know if they have kids but you know it's it's great that's what's great about this sport you know and you, you see guys from all walks of life and his path was different than my path but at the end of the day when that cage door closes we're all we're all created equal inside that cage and it depends on you know where you're at mentally um and how you prepared and I'm excited for this fight and I'm, I'm pulling for 10 means in this one you ever slap anyone not in a fight no man I would Wrestling love rooms? I would love um, when you were a senior was there a freshman that got out of line no no no, man, I would love to smack somebody, though. I think that's what I really want to do eventually in one of these face-offs or something. Really? Maybe. I don't know. It would be awesome. Just <laughs> smack, smack somebody. Someone? Or at least, like, at least go for it when someone pulls me. Like, I wish Dominic yesterday would have swiped it, Cody, whenever <laughs> Eric picked him up. That would have been awesome. Did you hear behind the scenes they had stuff going on, too? It, was, that Dom, was that Dominic or was that Jeremy Stevens? It was Jeremy Stevens. And, well, I think it started off with Is everything with okay with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think – I think they put their hands on each other, but I don't think a strike was thrown. Yeah, I think a push. Everyone, the commission looks the other way. Once yeah. a strike's thrown, that's not good. Yeah, um, yeah. I just saw it on Twitter as I was boarding the plane. So you may want to here. save those slaps for yeah. fight time. Yeah, that's true. You know, I don't know. Uh, let's sneak in a couple calls just before we end this first hour. We got Bellator lightweight champion Michael oh. Chandler in the house. Go ahead. I want to get one more thing. Was on, this your on take that. from before? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The yeah. last thing I wanted to bring up: the NFL. Okay, big NFL fans, right? How many times everybody knows? That when college football ends, or before the bowl games, they show a couple NFL games on a Saturday, right? It's been happening since we were kids. Yeah. But how many people do you continuously hear go, oh, shit, there's, there's games today on Saturday? It happens every year, right? That is a little bit of what bugs me about the, the whole media blackout thing is you don't know how many people are saying, yeah, I'm going to catch Ronda. We were going to have a barbecue on Saturday. It's going to be a great thing. You don't know how many people point. don't know that the fights are today and yeah. not Saturday. If any point. there was a time to push media, it would be for this card because it's on a Friday and people aren't used to it. Yeah. That's true. That's a good That's a good take. And being one of those people who still goes, oh, wow, it's a Saturday. I didn't know NFL was on Saturday. I'm still See? one of those guys. I'm telling uh, you, dude. I do I'm it like too a, on yeah, stuff. Um, 
But yeah, no, I agree. I mean, luckily, I mean, the UFC is a machine, though. I think they they've they've done a good job. They do a really good job of promoting their fights. Well, so we'll yeah, see. but the, we say that. But did you know that in one of the countdowns or one of the embeds, they fucked it up too. They did. did they? Yeah, Saturday, they Dana they said he was yelling at the production oh. team, going, "What the hell?" That's why Ronda did that one little video where she drilled it on Friday. I've been trying to do my best, you know. Keep mentioning it over. It's tonight. It's not Saturday. When you watch the, the but video, you're right, though, someone can slip like a that. A lot of people are going to slip. When you watch that promotion, right, regardless if they say on Friday, like how many times do you watch it and go, still Saturday? Okay. You're thinking you, no, you don't do else. that. Yeah. You're just you're going, oh, my God, they're in each other's faces or whatever. You're not thinking about the time, the date. So they have to go the extra mile to push that. Mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully the New Year's thing helps them out. You know, hopefully, hopefully the fact that it's New Year's on Saturday, people associate Saturday with Going out and partying or whatever, and the night before is the fights. Is your New Year's Hopefully. here, or are you leaving No, we're, we're heading back to San Diego. We're having some friends over, and Bree's cooking some chili. So, oh, yeah? chili party. Is she a chili master? She is a master in the kitchen. Yeah. So, what about you? Do you cook? I cook when I have to. I'm really good at cooking chicken and broccoli and cauliflower. That's about it. <laughs> you know, like I can cook some training camp When food, you followed him, didn't he make some food one day, and you said it kind of, kind of smelled yeah, good? Yeah, he made the challenge what scramble. Or the challenge, oh, uh, challenge scramby. Oh, the scramby, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a go-to. You know, in then the morning we, uh, you throw some eggs and some some meats and some veggies. We disrespected scramby. him with. Eh, we just came with Chipotle, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Son of a. <laughs> I was gonna sneak in Dean and Dan, but these guys are really good callers, so I think I'm just gonna let them spread their wings in the second hour, so I don't have to rush them off. But these two will lead things off. We also may have a couple surprise guests that stop by the studio. I know I keep saying it. And as I'm not hearing back from them, I'm getting nervous. But I'm really hoping one or two uh, strolls on through. I heard we have a lot of will be here by 11:15, supposedly. We have a lot of junkies here, and, and I know their faces light up when they get to meet great fighters like Michael Chandler, who's here co-hosting with us for the first hour. We'll also get maybe try and figure out what's next for Chandler. I know in 2017, you probably want to get three fights, right? I would love to get three fights. All right, so that first her. one, we got to start getting it going like March or something. Yeah. That way you can have your summer fight. And then yeah. your end of the year fight. Yeah, so we'll like pick your brain, see what's next for you over at Bellator, defending that world title. Uh, that fight against Benson Henderson was an awesome one. It should be in the running for fight of the year, along with Swanson and Choi, oh. along with Lawler and Con uh, Lawler and Condit. Yeah. There's been some really, really good ones there. But I really enjoyed you guys because it was high-level techniques. And you guys just kept pushing and pushing and you started off strong early. He started closing strong, and in yeah. the middle was a big, big, nice fire fight. So yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the fight. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was it was a good one, man. It was it was great to test myself against a you know, an all time great man. He's an all time great. Thirty, and, he, and I think he really uh, he brought it more in this fight than we've seen in the in the previous couple fights. You know, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, man, if I go out there and just you know, I don't know. He he, he didn't do that well, obviously against Koreshkov, and then didn't, didn't do that well against Pitbull. And, but he's, he's coming back with a vengeance. So. Serious XM audience, you get the Fight Club next with Cofield and RJ Clifford. The rest of you head on over to MMAJunkie.com forward slash radio, Facebook.com forward slash official MMA Junkie. See you there.
couple more prints. I washed mine though, that's why. I don't know if I don't know if mine is like <laughs> Well Pussy borrowed supposed to be this color. I mean <laughs> you borrowed that from Bree, right? Yeah. Mm. Extra medium. <laughs> Dude, I wonder color. what I would look like if I put that on. How much to put awesome. that shirt on? I'll give you twenty bucks. You look awesome. That's it? I'll give you twenty three ninety nine. Why? I don't know. Forty three ninety nine sounds like a good good deal. I have a buddy who uh, his dad gives him Whatever the Thanks, year man. is every year, that in cash for two thousand. So they got two thousand sixteen bucks. Wow, Isn't that cool? That is cool. Wow. Who has a problem with that one? Danny, check out VX, please. Okay. <laughs> it's the last show. All right. I uh, want to welcome to the show Sammy the Squid, our football expert. What's up, Sammy? Hey guys, how you doing? Good, and you? Good, good. Um. We're going to have you do your picks in just a second, but we're going to try something different this time. All right. You're going to take on two junkies. Okay. We didn't want to break anyone's heart, and Showtime wants another crack at you. Okay. But at the same time, we kind of locked in a gentleman from Tustin, California, uh-huh. who I think we're going to try and get on the phone uh, soon. So rather than just worry about it, I think we're just doing you know, you versus two, two junkies. I don't see a problem with it, do you? No. Nope. Yeah, Okay. More uh, than merrier. Right. In the meantime, let's take this quick call from Dean. And then when we get Ugo on the line from Tustin, then we'll crank out Beat the Squid. Dean from Georgia. What's up, man? Gentlemen, how's it going? Like the channel, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Um, hey, I just want, for a few things, I have a couple of things I want to discuss. I um, want to say, uh, Goes, you know, he punked out yesterday with by Max Holloway because, you know, he said it is what it is about a thousand times. So, you know. I just want to say it goes punked out a little you know, bit. All right, you know um, what? Check this out, man. These fighters, when they're in studio, I'm less scared of them. Because I feel like face-to-face, they know, look, I'm probably busting balls. I'm not trying to chide them or whatever. But I was in awe of Max Holloway. He's just such a destroyer. And, and I, we had had him in our studio before. I didn't remember that at the time. We hadn't had him in the new studio. But he's just been on such a tear. I was stoked, man. I became a fanboy. He was saying it is what it is a lot, and I know that gets on Goza's nerves. So I was real close to saying, Max, stop, because right now uh, Goza's is going to escort you out of the studio <laughs> if you keep it up. But this guy's a Hawaiian gangster. You just can't do that. So I actually backed down, and I just said, I'm going to let him say it as much as he can. But, you know, we all kind of have those crutches, and uh, Go says you know one. a lot. I have one. Oh, we know, and I'm about to tell you what it is. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> See, Chandler's a guy that I feel somewhat safe Son with. Son of a... But you know what you like to say? Yeah. At the end you of the do. day? At the end of the day. At the end of the day. He does say that. Johnny Hendricks, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, right? Uh, no, he'll throw you off. W- it's You know what I mean, but he'll throw you off with you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Chandler says, at the end of the day. I say, you know, you and know. um. I, I, I think I say, you know a oh, lot Oh, and you're well. just so perfect. No, I just said that. <laughs> you are just I so said, perfect. I said, you know, I started, I stopped saying, um. I used to do yeah. that as well. You my, got that from him. He's the king of um. Yeah. Squid. You say um a lot. But you don't say um. um. You go um like that. Any question. Like, hey, you want a Coke or Pepsi? Um. You'll do that. Hmm. Look at us. She's getting picked apart over here. Okay. I guess. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Well, you, you started right. it, Dean. That's so our go New Year's <laughs> resolution. Go, go ahead, Dean. What yeah. else you got? So, um, you know, you guys brought up fight of the year. You know, I asked the question. I was like, uh, and Copperheart answer, I asked, it, has ever a non-champion ever won fight of the year? And they always bring them up. Like Donald Cerrone this year won four fights. Neil Magny back in 2014 and Donald Cerrone back in 2014 won like four to five fights. Like they never win. It's like there should be almost like a prereq. Like are you a champion? Then or were you a champion during the year? Let's have this discussion. Um, and I had a question I'll take off the air, but I just wanted to say happy uh, new year to you, 
those, your family, all of Junkie Nation, and my question I'll take off the ear is, um, you know, Dominic's speaking a lot more, and, you know, I, I don't know if it's because of his Fox analyst, but they're really trying to promote this beef between them. Do you think this is a little bit, of, you know, fabricated? Because since Ronda's not doing the media, they gave him a nudge like, hey, you know, Step, no, step man. Nod, the history of Team Alpha you know? Male against Dominic is there. It's not fake. It's not fabricated. And Cody, of all of them, is like the hardest. You know what I mean? He's the guy that will step to you. Even if you told him, dude, you're gonna, the NSAC may find you. Don't do that. you got a fight coming out tomorrow. I just think that he's programmed that if someone insults him or gets in his space, he's going to handle it at that time. Dom's pushing the right buttons. He ain't scared either. He's not backing down. He's from the mean streets of Tucson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, it, it's not fabricated. I think it's real. Um, and but I but I do believe that Dom is an expert at pushing buttons. So you know, it's it's good. It's building up the fight. All right, guys. I'll see you in May. Okay. See you, Dean. All right. So we're gonna go through this quick. I'm gonna welcome to the show Showtime from Tennessee and Ugo from Tustin. Danny, if you can punch them in so that I don't mess anything up. Guys, are you there? Hey, Showtime, Ugo, there? are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's, what's going on, fat lads? What's going on? All right. Squid's here, and what we're going to do is we're going to bust out. Uh, you guys want to do three picks today or five still? You feel comfortable with five still, or you, you want to do three? Yeah, well, what do the guys got? What do you got, Showtime? Because there's you got not five? as much. Really, there's not as much as when there's college and all that, but there are bowl games, so I don't care. Yeah, yeah I, I got five. Okay, stick with five. All right, we'll stick five. with five. All right. I got five. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need. Do you, do you, can you name? I know zero. Can you name uh, three pro football teams? Um, yeah, you can yeah. Do that. The Houston Oilers. <laughs> look, at <that. laughs> look at that. We're uh, already off to a bad start. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of this. <laughs> All right, He's Squid. <laughs> San Francisco 49ers wouldn't count hey. either. <laughs> Damn, I walked into that one. All right. Uh, Sammy the Squid, lead things off. Show the boys how it's done. All right, I'm going to lead things off with respect to goes. I'm going to take the Redskins, game 308. Smart guy. Um,. They got to win. Giants have nothing to prove, nothing to do. Can't advance, can't drop. So taking the Redskins at game 308, seven and a half. Goes? I have. It's there. Confirmed it. Seven and a half. Okay. All right. Next up is showtime from Tennessee. I am taking 312, the coach, minus five. Minus five it is. Colts minus five. Ugo from Tustin. Got 301. Houston plus three. Houston, Houston plus Oilers three or? Oilers, see? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Houston the plus. Houston Texans. Houston plus three. All right. Ugo, go back again. Let's do the snake. The snake effect. All right. I got 325. Arizona minus six and a half. They are minus six here. Arizona minus six. Even better. What game number was that? Uh, Three two five. All right, back to showtime. Uh, I am taking three fourteen. The Eagles minus three and a half. They are four and a half here. Four and a half. Okay. All right, Squid. All right, I am going to go into college game two eight two and take Oklahoma minus three. Oklahoma two eighty two goes minus three. Does that sound right? Yeah. Can you see it from there? I can't see it from here. I can't see it. We'll just trust them at this point. Minus what, Squid? Minus three, on, and that's the Mandalay sheet. All right, cool. All right, back to Squid. Back to me. I'm going to go under in game 3-3-2. Three, three, it's the Raiders and the Broncos. Under 41 is what I got. Uh, yep. 3-3-1. Three, yeah, three, right here. Game 3-3-2? Three, three, yeah. All right, showtime. It's on you. Uh, game 2-7-6, uh, Florida. Minus three. Florida minus and three. Didn't they play yesterday? No. Florida? Oh, I'm thinking no. Florida and Arkansas. All right, Florida minus <laughs> three. Game 276. You got it. You go from Tustin. I got this one's for Big Rob. 273. Ohio State minus two and a half. Ohio State minus two and a half. All right, back to Ugo. That might be three, Ghost. I got uh, Can you see it? Green, uh, 309, Green Bay minus three. Green Bay minus three. Fuck it. We'll just go with that. Showtime. You're next. I'm going game 278, Wisconsin minus eight. Wisconsin minus eight for Showtime. Squid. 
All right, I'm going to go in game 320, under in the Pittsburgh Steelers, 43. Under 43 in the Steelers game. Okay, back to Squid, finish up. Back to me, and I'm going to go with, um, I have game 274, Clemson, but I have plus three. I can't see if it's three and a half or, or three or two and a half up there. Can you see, Ghost? No. 274. Well, we'll figure it out. Clemson, I can see it. Wait, wait, wait. Clemson is, no, I can't see it. I fucked up. Oh, yeah, yeah, plus three. Plus three. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Showtime. Uh, game two six eight. I'm going with uh, who's that? LSU. I'm, oh, excuse that, me. I'm going with Louisville. Louisville. Okay. Plus. Yeah. Plus yeah, three plus and a half. Three and a half. All right. And last one for Ugo. I got three oh seven. New York Giants plus seven and a half. Oh, oh he's going the reverse of Squid. Plus seven and a half. All right, guys. I got them all. We don't need to repeat them. Squid, Ugo's part of the Man Cave team. You got any parting words for those guys? Oh, man, we're right on their ass, man. I know. <laughs> Ugo? So. Ugo, I know you're getting nervous. You guys got a, you guys had like a 150-point lead, and slowly but surely we've been chipping away. Uh-huh. It, it was loud when you got catching up, and we took the lead back, and it got real quiet out there. <laughs> well, fuck. The game ended like at midnight. We're sleeping by then, but uh, you'll see. You'll see. We got five uh, yeah. games today, and uh, we mean business, man. We're enough of the playing around. Enough of the head start we gave you all. It's going to be all over <laughs> soon. Enjoy it. Head start? You wouldn't know about head start, Joe. Or George. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Henry. I mean, Ugo. Uh, thanks for the call. Thanks for calling in, right. and nice talking to you. All right, thank you. All right, Peace. All right. thank you. Showtime as well, man. We'll see you in a few minutes, in a few seconds. Thanks, Squid. All right, guys, for hanging out. Good luck with the picks. What's the pick for? The, throw that little freebie out there for the college hoops. For the college hoops, okay. At one o'clock today, we've got Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. And uh, what are we looking at? What kind of an plus odd? plus two and a half? Plus two and a half. Got so it. So you gonna get on that one o'clock game today? That's college hoops, folks. College basketball. All right, Oklahoma we're gonna State. take an early break here for the second hour. When we come back, we'll be talking to Jessica Andraj, the top contender for Jessica Yendrachik. Uh, at least, huh? Joanna. Oh, sorry, Joanna Yendrachik. Uh, Jessica Andraj is the number one contender in a lot of people's books, and and hopefully that fight gets booked because I think she's earned it. She'll be here in studio. Dan from Morgan, I promise you, we'll squeeze you in. Just hang tight. We'll be right back after this break.
They can drink Mentos flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a I single five. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Chunky Radio. We're now joined in studio by uh, Jessica Andraj and her translator, Thiago. Welcome, Jessica. How are you doing? Uh, muito obrigado pelo convite. Né? Estou muito feliz de estar aqui. E espero sempre estar podendo vir aqui falar um pouco sobre a minha carreira e um pouco sobre a luta. What she said was, I'll translate this one. <laughs> she said, wow, she goes, you're more handsome in person than the times I've seen you on video. I'm a huge fan of your show. Did I get that right? Muito obrigado. Sim, foi o que eu falei. E eu estou muito feliz de estar aqui. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you're a team player. <laughs> no, seriously, um, uh, happy holidays. Good to have you here. Uh, it's unfortunate the circumstances that, you know, we won't be get to get to see a fight, but, but we're happy to meet you. Oh, muito obrigado, o prazer foi tudo é todo meu, né, claro. Infelizmente, né, a luta foi cancelada, mas eu vim, eu treinei, eu pude aproveitar bastante e hoje vou estar lá no evento e poder acompanhar tudo de perto também, né. Yeah, it's just a sad situation with the fight being canceled and us already being here, but we're just trying to make the most out of the situation and, you know, just training as much as we can uh, throughout the, these two weeks. You know, there's a lot of very good training partners here in Vegas, so uh, even though we don't have the fight, at least we're getting some very good training out of it. What's the worst part about not fighting? Is it the money or is it just the, you didn't get a chance to beat someone up? I think it's... É tudo, né? É perder o dinheiro, é chegar a perder todo o camp. Na verdade, eu não perdi o camp, né? Eu tô só aproveitando para ficar melhor ainda para próximas lutas que vir. E mais o desgaste de ter que baixar o peso e se preparar, isso é muito complicado. Mas fora isso, tá tudo ótimo. Yeah, I think the main problem is just dealing with the weight cut because that is really lost, you know. Uh, it was a, a lot of uh, heartache and uh, a lot of training and a lot of uh, work to, to get her here on the way that she did. You know, like this time around she came in two weeks before and she was already around the, the way that she is normally on fight week. So it was one of the best camps regarding nutrition and the, and the weight cut. And, and that is really lost, unfortunately. But the training and everything is, is not a problem. Uh, money, you know, it was gonna make a difference for sure. But then again, I know that the UFC is going to be able to take care of us and, uh, and help us somehow because they know how much we spend on doing this fight. And if they don't get us a fight soon, I know they're, they're going to take care of us. Are, are, you, are you sure of that? Have they said that? Or is that just a gut feeling of yours? The money part. I think it's just the impression that it was because... Infelizmente, né, eles, eles é, me ajudaram com a parte de hotel para poder estar tá aqui, poder assistir a luta e tudo. Mas a parte financeira, infelizmente, não aconteceu de ajuda nenhuma. Yeah, like, um, it's more of a gut feeling, because they did take care of us. Uh, they put us on the hotel, they uh, gave us the entire structure that we normally would have on fight week. But the UFC has always been very good to, to us, so, you know, they, they understand the situation that she's going through and and uh we're really hoping that they they step up and, and take care of her too jessica andraj in our studio you can follow her on twitter twitter at jessica mma pro goes you're right you putting out fires uh a little bit no i was i was gonna point out i'll bring it up on the screen but okay this uh tweet here right with uh carla esparza can you kind of go in into detail like how all this came about and just kind of explain it a little bit yeah, and, and I'll read the tweet. It says, if you really wanted to fight, I was available tonight at Carla Esparza. But if what you say is true, I will beat you any card, anywhere. She's not afraid of anyone. Então, é, é, a gente acabou vendo no site deles mesmo, né? A, acho que a Carla Esparza postou. E ela falando que tava sem dinheiro, que tava sem luta e não sei o que. Eu falei, poxa, tô aqui, eu não lutei porque não tinha adversário. E ela tá pedindo um adversário, poxa, tô aqui, 
só lutar, eu luto com você em qualquer lugar, em qualquer evento. E qualquer hora eu te dou um cacete e pronto, acabou, tá tudo, tudo resolvido. É, só basta ela querer, né? Eu já pedi várias vezes a luta e infelizmente todas as vezes ela corre. Na verdade, ela quer alguém fácil pra ela bater, né? Ela não quer pegar alguém difícil que bata nela, né? Então, acho que é isso que acontece. Yeah, uh, early today we saw a, a news piece from you guys, actually, from MMA Junkie. Uh, I hate about those guys. Her <laughs> and uh, about, <laughs> about Carla, not just, <laughs> but oh, oh, okay. about Carla and how she was complaining about not having a fight, about waiting so much time and making money, having to pay taxes, and just complaining about everything. Right. Well, You know, we have Jessica here, who was supposed to fight, and she's available. We know that Ka Claudia wants to fight her. We know that Courtney wants to fight her. We know that there's a line of people waiting to fight Claudia. Mm -hmm. Claudia was supposed to be Jessica's first fight at Strawweight mm. back in March, I think. And that didn't happen. She ended up taking the Juliana Lima fight, claiming that Jessica might not make weight because she had problems like this before. But in the end, like, if she really wanted to fight, there's a ton of people waiting to fight her, and Jessica included. And the big problem there is that it seems like she wants an easy fight. Because she's ranked, what, like two now? She's way up there. And, and if she wants to fight anybody, they're not going to give them anybody easy. You know, she's going to have to be fighting the threes, fours, fives, or right. six in the ranking. And Jessica is right up there. She's at five. And we need to keep moving up if we're going to get a title run. Um, that'll be an ideal fight for us. We have been actually asking for Carla since we got in, especially because it was supposed to be the first fight. Mm -hmm. But still nothing you know uh, there was talks of Moroz then Angela Hill but no more <laughs> talks about Carla since day one of us moving down right and by the way when you said anywhere does that mean in in the hua as well or, or just the octagon just, <laughs> just, trying to, just trying to measure your degree of gangster over here ah, eu, não, na rua não pode, né? Na Você não quer brigar na rua? Na rua não, Carla? Não, não pode. Não? <risos> assim não She's pode. Not <risos> assim eu fico desempregada. That's my job. That's what it says anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Donde don seja. Yeah, anywhere is more in uh, any city. If she wants to do it in California, if it makes oh, her happy, anywhere. okay, okay. It'll be fine. You know, any card, uh, we can make it work. You know, mm -hmm. we just yeah. need a fight, and she seems like she needs one too. So. Can Jessica, share, can Jessica share a good street fight story? I really do ask that of every fighter that comes in here. Então, né, eu, na verdade eu nunca fui muito de brigar não, mas é, na, na, escola, na, na, praia. É, na parte da escola assim tinha bastante briga. Uma vez tinha um menino do, da minha sala e ele queria brigar com o meu irmão. E ele ficava me atentando, aí ele ficava assim, poxa, chama teu irmão, aquele bunda mole lá pra me bater, que não sei o que. E aí, no final da aula, a gente foi brigar, né? Foi, foi lá pro fundo do colégio. E meu irmão começou a brigar com ele, se embolaram no chão, e eu sentando bicudo neles no chão lá, e eu chutando. Daqui a pouco, esse menino levanta. Aí falou assim, poxa, você vai... Tinha um outro menino junto, ele falou, poxa, você vai deixar, ela te bateu ali. Aí ele veio pra cima de mim, aí eu dei um socão na cara dele, ele caiu no chão. Aí foi embora chorando, com a boca cheia de sangue. Aí no outro dia, veio um monte de menina, no, no, umas 12 meninas na frente do colégio pra me bater. O negócio foi tenso, mas eu não apanhei não. So, <laughs> I didn't understand a lick, but I'm interested as <laughs> yeah, hell, so right? I, I like the part where she went. That sounds exciting. Okay. So what happened was there was this boy in, in her school that wanted to beat up her brother, her older brother, and he, she, he would keep teasing her about how he was going to beat up her brother and this and that. And what happened was her brother and, and the kid went behind the school one day after the classes were done. They got a little scuffle, went to the ground, were rolling around, and she came in and started just kicking <laughs> both of them on the ground, uh -huh. just trying to get involved. And, and at one point, the kid got up and, and went after her. And it was like, oh, so you're going to get involved? Okay. So uh, he went after her, and she just punched him right in the mouth, broke mm -hmm. a few teeth, a little bit wow. of blood, and the kid went back home crying. Uh, next day, there was about 12 girls in front of the school waiting to beat her up, and yeah. she did not get beat up. Let's just say that. <laughs> Come on! Você contra doze? Doze. Eu só lembro que eu fiquei escorada no muro. 
Aí ela assim, oh, eu vou te bater, que não sei o que, você bateu no meu namorado. Eu falei, poxa, a culpa não é minha, ele que veio pra cima, eu, eu me defendi. Eu falei, agora se ele apanhou, a culpa é do seu namorado, não tem culpa disso. So, basically, like, the girls jumped on her, and she was, like, with her back to the wall, and everybody, and they were like, oh, you beat up my boyfriend, and this, and that. And I was like, it's not my fault, he came after me, I just socked him in the mouth, and I was just defending myself. And then they started scuffling, and she just had to beat a few of them up, and... And it, it was it like this? Away. Almost yes. like this, except foi girls? Foi tipo assim. <laughs> foi tipo assim. Like that? Yes. E aí eu olhei wow. assim, as, ah, vamos te bater. Eu falei assim, eu posso apanhar hoje, mas amanhã eu pego uma por uma. Hey. So, <laughs> I just said, like, uh, if you want to all come out at, at once, it's fine, but then I'm going to pick each and every one of you guys, <laughs> one <Yeah>. by one. <laughs> You're going to be done. Who looks like the toughest uh, in that group right there? Who oh, looks like the toughest? <laughs> Don't, don't, be afraid. <laughs> don't, don't be afraid to hurt feelings. Go ahead. So, him? He's the toughest? Yeah. Who, who, next? The boys. Um, the boys. Exa the boys. Examine. The one in the back. Yeah. Ele? Conhece ele? No. Ele é Michael Chandler. Campeão do Bellator. Ah, por isso. Tá explicado. Tá explicado. Então vamos trocar outro. Oh, you wanna, you wanna switch vamos it? Vamos trocar, é. Ok. E aí, número 3. Uma mais. Angela. Ah, é sua coach. Ah, não, não. Sua coach, né? Ok, e pergunte a ela quem ela acha que seria o mais fácil. Desculpa, guys. Ah, eu não sei. Agora me pegou o dia. Ele? Acho que o coach. Coach? Oh, não, 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 não. Eu coach. ia correr. Só <laughs> <laughs> correndo. Just run around and. <laughs> ia correr, mas corre pra lá mesmo. What, what, what? Tell me your plans in 2017. We have to wrap up soon, but just tell me how you think 2017 plays out. Bom, é, se o UFC permitir, né, é claro, é, fazer mais uma luta, né, e ficar mais bem ranqueado na, na categoria e poder, poder pedir a disputa de cinturão, né, que já faz muito tempo que eu tô aí nessa espera, eu saí do, do 61, né, com sete lutas, já tenho, né, um, um cartel muito bom no, no UFC e eu acho que tá na, na hora de eu ter a minha oportunidade de levar esse cinturão para casa, né, e mais do que nunca, acho que agora eu tô mais preparada do, do que antes para chegar lá e poder trazer esse cinturão. One more fight and then ask for a title shot. Because if we are doing the title shot, we need to have money. We need to be prepared to to invest on that camp because it's a serious one and it has to be taken with a a different level of, uh, I guess, investment than a regular camp. Because we're not gonna go for a title fight just to be there. Mm -hmm. If she's gonna go for a title fight, it's to bring the belt with her. And hopefully she gets this one if the UFC allows. Because we had been offered a, a title, a straight title fight, but we know that. It's oh really? Not, it's not the ideal scenario. We mm. really need to do. You've one been more. offered a title fight right now against yeah, Joanna. Yeah, after after all the mess with the fights been canceled, mm -hmm. they mentioned yeah we could go straight there. But honestly, for us, it's not very interesting because we need to make this worth. Like this has to be a proper camp. It has to be the so best. So it's a camp business decision. Of course. Oh okay. All uh, right. Uh, so she wants the right camp. All right. All yeah. right. And, and How soon the, did they ask it for? Um. Because like they didn't mention timeline, but because we are, we know Joanna. She has been saying that she wants to fight in April, and that'll be a little bit too late. So we, it would be ideal to do one more fight, make some money, and be able to put all that into camp. And and then you know if she gets the title fight, hopefully she wins and maybe defend it once before the end of the year. That'll be nice. <laughs> yeah, all right. it's a nice 2017. Right? I like that. Yeah, it was very nice to meet you. Thanks for coming here and doing the interview, and thanks for telling us the stories. Thanks for embarrassing those guys. We had a good time. Thank you. Eu que agradeço, né? Muito obrigado por todo o carinho e por tudo mesmo. E espero estar mais vezes aqui para a gente contar mais histórias ainda, que tem muitas histórias por aí. Yeah, really appreciate the invitation, and you know, it's great to be here. And every time we're in Vegas, we try to drop by awesome. <laughs> and share some more stories. That's one of the baddest women on the planet, Jessica Andrade at Jessica MMA Pro. Fights at 115 pounds. Probably will be fighting for a world title in 2017. She really, really does get down, folks. Give her a follow. And she's really, really a sweetheart behind the scenes. Mean as she is in that octagon, she's really been a sweetheart. It's been nice to meet her. And thanks, Diago, for for coming down, for translating, no Thank you. for hanging out. Thank you, Angela, for setting that up. All right, uh, we are going to move Michael Chandler back into his co-host role. Um, actually, uh, can we do a quick picture, too, with you? Yes. All right, we're going to do the picture as we host the show. Um, 
and then we'll bring Michael in here to close things out. What's that, Danny? What's that, Danny? Do you want me to play music while you're while you're doing that, so that in case you guys can't talk while nah, you're doing it? We're talk. just goofing off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're yeah, just goofing right. off. Well, we appreciate it. Here I'll play music anyway. I could do that. All right. Uh, right here in the middle. Oh, all right. Yeah. Because it just makes taking the picture more regal, I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. With this music <laughs> in the background. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so Michael Chandler will join us here. Happy New Year. Thanks again, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Danny. <laughs> or thank you, Randy. Sorry. Dan Danny on the phone. Sorry. Yeah. Danny was talking to me. Chandler, uh, your boy okay? I'm back. Oh, he's great, man. Okay. You got the, I think backwards. you have to flip it. Oh, man. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to. You going to switch it up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Jan? How you doing? How you doing? Good, man. Are you going to go with that one? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on know. one second. We're actually, actually doing no, the, the show live right now. Hang on one second. Uh, you don't know how to put on headphones or what? I had it all good. And it's then backwards. All, all That's why. Garage came we got to now it. turn it around. There you go. There, there you go. go. Okay. All right. You no, have a natural dent in your head oh where yeah. the headphones would sit. Why do you yeah. put them back that way? I don't know. I just thought. The where, hair? Where's it supposed to? Is it supposed to go this? this oh, no. Yeah, now you're good. Yeah. But now your hair looks awful. But see, I have a big spot here and it's not even touching <laughs> over here so take this call from dan all right and then uh i'll be right back right all right be dan from morning. <laughs> what's I up dan? dan what's happening gentlemen how you doing and Chandler, thanks for coming in the studio man great to have some bellator greatness in here yeah thanks man i'm glad to be here awesome hey man how stoked are you guys feeling for these four title fights that we're gonna get on nbc or free tv with uh, the World Series of Fighting. Oh, how are you guys uh, feeling about these? Do you think any of the champions are going to lose their belt? How are you feeling? I, I just feel like statistically it's going to happen. But it's really tough, man, because, I mean, look look at Justin Gaethje. Uh, um, even look at Marlon Marais. Like, they've been on top for so long that it's so hard to pick against them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Branch, I mean, Fitch. I would say the Fitch Shields fight is probably your, your best bet. Uh, that's a fight that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. They've got a little bit of history in the, the grappling circuit, so I'm excited about that. It's, this is a big weekend. If you're a fight fan, uh, you're going to have a lot to do. I agree, man. I think Jake has an excellent chance, and with this win, man, he's got to be up in consideration for, you know, best welterweight out there just because of the wins that he's got on his record, you know, Tyron, Tyron Woodley and whatnot. I want to, everyone's been talking about fight of the year and all this stuff, and I want to kind of focus on moment of the year. I got three of them that really come to mind, and one of them is Condit Lawler after round five, and they just put it all out there, which could be, you know, round of the year. Uh -huh. And just both of them are so spent, and Big John just kind of puts them both up on the cage. Both of them got their arms up there, and they're just exhausted. That's one of my moments. The next one's got to be... Uh, Joe Rogan screaming, he tapped, he tapped, as uh, Nate took out Connor and Misha took out uh, Holly on the same card. That was incredible. And I'm going to throw a kind of oddball one out there. It's got to be Crazy Horse over there in Ryzen after he gets his win. And he pretty <laughs> much kind of comes into his pants onto the, uh, the trophy that he just won and just lays there on the cage sucking his thumb like a baby who just, you know, got fed or something like that. Just amazing moment. Well, what's your guys' moment of the year? Man, it's got to be Connor holding two belts in one hand. I mean, that's pretty amazing to be able to pull off. Uh, George, we're talking about not the greatest fights of the year, but the greatest moments of the year. Oh, uh, I just have to give you one? I mean, yeah, we can give as many as you want. It's I'll your you show, man. You can do whatever the I'll, hell you want. I'll give you a bunch, man. Uh, I'll give you a bunch. For one, uh... Yes, Connor winning two belts was huge, but I always it we're was just, it was we're just huge. talking about the moment. Okay. Him holding two belts. It was huge because he in the moment. last twelve months destroyed two world champions. You know how uh -huh. I feel about the road to the title. <laughs> I thought it was one of those where it's like, come on in, sir. You know, face Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. Everybody else is fighting all these contenders to get there, but when he did get there, he fucked up two great fighters. I lean more towards the personal side. Chandler blasting the pit bull was fucking amazing. I mean, these are literally like Gigi just lifts himself off the couch and cheers and pumps his fist. And you jumped on that cage. That was huge. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, you know, just kind of seeing like the sorry the fighters that were, were kind of like.
close with, you know, realize their dreams and do stuff. Like, I was gutted for King Mo. He lost mm -hmm. last night to Crow Cop. That one hurt. Yeah. So I, I kind of ride with a lot of you guys uh, in the fights. Um, look, if I stand outside of all that, I would say about I thought Brock Miocic Lesnar. knocking out um, Verdum was just yeah, a was monster. A it's great to have an American heavyweight champion and to do it in Brazil like that. That was pretty huge. Um, I thought Bisping's run, not any particular fight, although Rockhold was impressive, but just his run. Because this is a guy, somebody said, Bisping, if he's not fighter of the year, is he comeback fighter of the year? No, because he was undefeated in 2015, too. He beat Dalloway and somebody else. He had two wins in 2015. Then he had the championship run in 2016. So he's not a comeback fighter. He's been fighting great for the last two years. Mm -hmm. But everybody felt like Bisping got to a level, but he would never be a champion. He did become a champion. you got to <coughs> tip your hat to that. That was amazing. Um, Zufa sale. Hmm? Zufa sale. The Zufa sale was monstrous because I think it woke everyone up. Look, the Fertitas ride off into the sunset with billions, but the fighters are going to get paid more. Um, I, I just think everyone grew up a little bit. I think fighters are starting to look out for themselves a little bit more. So mm -hmm. there's just, you know, it's a tough question, Dan, because there's so many great moments. Um, but there's there's a few from my side. I have two. I have two really quick. All right. Going with the Bisping in the Bisping vein, watching Dan Henderson's last fight. Damn, I was gonna say that, that. was just the what was it, th two or three knockdowns with that H bomb. Mm. Never, you know, never didn't beat Bisping, didn't win, didn't knock him out. But those couple times, those were those moments. Those were one of the moments where I jumped off the couch because you're watching this 47 year old man who looks mm. like he's just scar tissue in every single joint, and he's almost realizes that dream of knocking out Bisping and getting the title. Um, and then sticking with getting the title, I think what's going to be known as one of the greatest overcoming comeback stories ever is Dominic Cruz coming back, beating Dillashaw, which was just he's up for fight of the year. Yeah, you know, so he but beating beating Dillashaw and just him holding that belt up, which after four ACL surgeries and what that guy went through was an amazing story. So that's what I'll go with. There you go, Dan. There's a couple moments for you. I love them, man. Hey, I'm thinking of a couple other things, too, man. Dillashaw's making some great points about he's fighting the number two guys, getting all these wins. He, you know, went to a split decision with Dom anyways, and he pictures himself as the champ. I think that's a great mindset to have going into that, man, Rewatching that fight. It was just so crazy how Dom just couldn't get hit, but the bigger shots were landed by TJ, in my opinion. I think there was one head kick by Dom. Boy, the last thing I want to throw out, man, is, like, we've been talking a lot about, you know, getting rid of this 170-pound division, bringing in 165, 175. If you had your pick, like, who would it be the, the, the fights to make for that? Because I'm thinking, like, Cowboy Cerrone versus Nate Diaz for the 165-pound belt. Throw Tyron Woodley against uh, Demian Maya because he's a massive welterweight at 175. And I think we should almost kind of commemorate the 175 pound division and have the last fight at 170 be GSP's return versus Nick Diaz and then they got to pick are they going to go up they're going to go down after that what do you guys think of that back to you on Mel. thanks for the call Dan um man I mean you could go all day with something like that I I have a feeling that by the end of next year we may see something like that and I know a lot of people point towards boxing and you don't want to champ every three five over there it's three five pounds it's yeah. different man it's 10 pounds MMA if we yeah. do it every Every 10 pounds in MMA, I don't think it'll be that bad, but I think you will see a lot of guys that, that play that game of going up and down, especially when it means it could save your job, right? If you yeah. have two, three straight losses at, one seven, uh, you know, at 175, but you can make 165, it may give you a little bit more life. So mm -hmm. there, there's a ton of those, man. I wouldn't even know where to start. But uh, it's interesting, and I think it will happen by the end of the year. Yeah, 15 pounds is a lot between weight classes. Mm -hmm. you know. Are you happy with, with what you get paid or <laughs> – is is the Zufa <laughs> trickle effect going to make you a monster the next time you're a free agent? Um, I'm happy with what I get paid. Yeah. You know, I think I'm I'm paid well. Um, and because uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll let see. me ask I mean, you I this: got... Can you beat up Conor McGregor? Yeah. Okay, so he makes three million plus a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. You well, know, you you know, you don't. So that's no, my question: Is like, wait a minute, if he makes that much and I got his type of skills, yeah. How far behind am I? That's the question every fighter should be asking well, themselves. Well, I think I think what it is is what what we're seeing too. When you just talked about it with the sale, and it's becoming more of a, it's becoming, you know, your average fight. You know, all these other guys are fighting for their normal purses. If you fight Conor, you're getting the pay per view money, or you're getting the you're getting the extra, you know, 
what did Nate sign for? Three million or whatever flat. Yeah, he was on the record for two. Yeah. yeah, two. You know, so so that's. I mean, that's in and of itself. And you know, I, I'm I would never hate on Connor. And and right. a lot of these guys are jealous of him, and they're like this and that and the other thing. I love it. I think it's good for the sport. You know, would I love to? Would I love to fight him and get that nice payday? Absolutely. Um, but you know, I think I think when it comes to there's there's the Connor fight, and then there's everyone else, mm-hmm. and that you know in in the UFC right now. Um, so for me, man, I would I would love that opportunity, and you know we'll see we'll see what the future holds. I'm still I'm no spring chicken, but I'm just now hitting my prime. So I got a lot know? of fight left. In. You're not thirty, are you? Uh, thirty. Thirty. You still got years left, brother. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got I got half a decade left in the sport, probably. So is Thompson gonna be ready by the time you're ready to fight? I know that's who you wanted next, but do you have an update on him? And yeah, I mean I I I I'm want to fight him next. Um, my only stipulation is I'm not doing it in San Jose. Um, so I'll do it anywhere else in the world. Um, but I mean, man, all I, all I know is when that fight gets, when that fight gets announced, I'm not signing on the dotted line unless they, unless they tell me, okay, here's your backup opponent and here's your date and you will fight this guy when Josh gets hurt. Who's next then? If, if not Josh, I don't know anybody. I just want to fight. Does the backup opponent matter? Who it um, is? I mean, it, it would need to make sense. I mean, you know, it needs to be decent name i guess can you mess around at 170 in the meantime yeah you want to I w- yeah I, w- I would love to i would love the Roy mcdonald fight mm-hmm. you know i think he needs uh he needs to come in and win you know get a win but i would love the Roy mcdonald fight he's a tall glass he's a tall drink of water yeah you know um but, but why not just go for lima and make history because <sighs> the rory fight's a bigger fight i think than being a two-time champion well i think you wait for rory to Two-way beat lima close. And then, and then you fight Rory for the t- then. Then you're making history and a history. Oh, okay. So you wait you for that. Rory to fight Lima first. Because well. see, by the time that happens, I think you'll already have your situation yeah. sorted out. I'm thinking like chasing history now. I mm-hmm. don't know. But, no. Um, I Possibly. bet you Spike and Bellator is probably open minded to anything. They've done one night tournaments. That's the one Mo and yeah. Davis and them yeah. were involved in. They've done staggered tournaments through Strike Force. Um, they were creative with Benson versus the other pit bull. Yeah. Remember? Um, so I don't know, man. I just think now's the time to whatever's really on your mind, chase it. Well, I don't think Josh has many more years left in the sport, you know. So I want that fight. So that fight needs to happen sooner than later, you know. So he's he's getting up there. So that fight needs to happen sooner than later. So I think it's smarter for me to take that fight right now than, you know, but and I want to see I want to see Rory come in and you know do well or if he fights for the title first or if he doesn't fight for the title first we'll see but that, I don't know that fight at 170 you wouldn't want to get one under your belt first to just kind of see what it's like I basically just I basically just did I mean Benson fought at 170 you know he's not a mm-hmm. he's not a big 170 pounder but you know I mean he fought at both weight classes was successful at both weight classes um, you know so. I don't know, man. To me, it's to me, it's just another guy. I mean, I train with one seventy pounders all the time in the gym. You know, it's all, it's all the same. I'm I'm walking around I'm like one eighty five, one ninety. So I'm not. I wouldn't be a tiny Walter weight, but I would be fast. What about Frankie Edgar esque? Where does Chandler? Where's his dream fight on the University of Missouri campus or just in St. Louis at their biggest arena? Is it called the Scott Trade Center? The Scott Trade Center. Or? Um. Yeah, man, doing one back at Mizzou would be awesome at the at the Mizzou Arena or the Hearn Center. Actually, is where where we wrestle. I'm sure, you can pack at least five ten thousand there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it holds like eleven or twelve actually. Right. So you like that scenario? I like that scenario. Um, you ever floated it by Scott? No, we we did during the Bjorn Rebney day days. So we need to, we need to uh, replay that one. You know, go back with uh, it. Yeah, I, I think that's what Connor does, Chandler. He just asks. Yeah. And, st- and now he's to the point where he demands. But I think he just asks, 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 and that's why mm-hmm. he gets uh, – that's why he kind of gets what he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I guess I'm being pushy here. I don't mean to no, step I like it. across the line no, or I like anything it. I like mean, that. Because, I mean, realistically, I mean, I, I'm, at a, I'm at a point with, with you know, with, in my situation where I, I think I am. <laughs> you don't want a Heineken? Oh, um, okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're afraid um, the fans might go, oh, man, look at oh the champ. Oh, gosh, I can't believe he's he abusing drinks alcohol. beer. I like what he Does did. he seriously drink beer? <laughs> Not a fan anymore. You drink Anyways. beer? You that was a right? good move. I'm a, actually, I don't drink beer right now, actually. Oh. I'm a, I'm a bourbon guy or a wine guy right now. Okay. Watching Damn. my girlish figure. Bourbon or wine, huh? Bourbon or wine. Bourbon can get bad. Bourbon on the rocks. 
Are you gonna Basically indulge hates. in food while you're here, like 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 yeah, buffets well, and shit? Uh, or? no, we need to indulge. Me, <laughs> me and Bree never eat. Like, you, you ever? Well, you guys probably have the same thing. A fight. The fights are like a six-hour long process, and if you forget to eat before, you're stuck there. Mm -hmm. and it's either concession stand food or nothing, you know. So and concession made that, that ruins the great meal that could come after. Exactly. But then you gotta sit there with grumble, grumble. Yeah. So we're, we're waiting for so three o'clock before we go over, and I want to catch some of the prelims. And what do you the, recommend? He's at the Cosmo. What do you recommend? At the Cosmo, they have that uh, Holstein's or whatever that Holstein. Yeah. You right know what I'm talking about? Egg slut. I think so. Yeah. Egg that's slut. That's the name it's of a place. Egg um, slut. Yeah. You feel weird whenever you're eating it, but, but it was a good sandwich. You could cross the bridge, and across the bridge, Planet Hollywood, I think, has like they got Fogo de Chao and stuff Ooh, like okay. that. Yeah. I was trying to get him to go with us to Texas de Brazil. Are we still going? Oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, but he's got. Ooh, a, 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 what, what do you have that procedure? What's it called? Do you want to say it or? What is it? Detoxifying something? Oh, the oh, it's just a uh, it's just a spa thing, you know. Wife wanted to do the spa thing, so we're gonna, gonna buff up, thing. buff you up. No, I think no, it's like a detoxifying thing. Hot bath, cold bath, get all the toxins. Is that out a fancy way of saying they're gonna clip my nails, get the get the <laughs> no, back knee no, off? No, and no, uh, no manicure. Clip pedicure. your eyebrows. They did say they like <laughs> lotion you down afterwards, though. Do so. Oh, uh, is it side by side I couple know thing? What he's talking about. Yeah, no, I think we share a. I think we share a tub. You share a really? tub? Yeah. And then there's someone there treating you guys? Uh, no, but they treat us afterwards. Oh. But, yeah, I don't know why she's going to try to put the like moves Niles on me or Frasier. something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Like, babe, Niles hands off. Frasier yeah, like Niles and Frazier. Yeah, yeah, that's an old, that's a older show. I'm not sure if you're a, a fan of uh, Frasier. little limes on his eyes. Okay, oh, we're yeah. get, I'm getting responses here for the Ooh. Cosmo. Ooh, Tell okay. Chandler to try Rose Rabbit Lie, amazing food and desserts. That's a restaurant? Yeah. Rose Rabbit Lie. Yeah. What's it look like? I Rose. don't know. That's all I was Rose told. Rose Rabbit Lie. Rose yeah. Rabbit. Okay. Thank you. Uh, he'll look it up right now. Also, if you really, really want to load oh, up, I go to the one. Bacchanal Buffet at Caesar's Palace. Bacchanal. Okay. Yeah. And then you can just go. It's kind of like, I know you're probably thinking, buffet, like, oh, my God, that's just the worst. It's no, quality, Vegas, yeah, right, Vegas, goes? No, Vegas has it's got, got good You're going to pay a little bit more, but it's really quality. Like, you can get really some really yeah, good stuff. But that's good. That's when you, you know, you're. it's okay to pay a little bit more when you know you're going to get you know, some good food. Yeah. You're uh you're at the Cosmo, right? Yes. Do you like seafood? Um I'm I do sometimes. My wife doesn't, so Alright. Go to Todd English pub. Alright? We've made this part of our junkie gathering. Todd English they pub. have like great burgers, stuff, but what they're really famous for, George, can you skip over a little bit? Is, is oysters. Their, uh, no. Yeah, actually they do have good oysters there too. But they have Oh, those uh, this really good lobster dogs. roll. I don't know if you like lobster, but the lobster rolls are Is that amazing. A piece of bread with lobster on it. Yeah, dude, looks pretty good. Looks actually really good. It's really, good. really good. And the the beer selection is really good. I know you don't like beer, but they have good wine. I do. I do like they beer. I like, I like IPAs. I've just been oh, they're trying full to with watch that. my girl. Oh, he's girl San figure. Diego. They're, they're oh, yeah. big on that. San Diego. Huh? I didn't even know what an IPA was till I moved there, and then it's just they're so so good. What's pork that? Be pork belly Ooh. sliders. Ooh. That does look good. Ooh. Should go Ooh, there, mac man. and cheese. Actually, you should go to Texas, Brazil with us. But if you can't, I would do this. Yeah. Chandler, you That's brought you up the name are. Bjorn Rebney. Bjorn Rebney. How was your ending with Bjorn Rebney? I saw a lot of fighters when he exited, mm -hmm. whether he was let go or quit. I think it was let go. Mm -hmm. A lot of fighters that, that I thought he butted heads with, including Eddie Alvarez, still had positive messages towards him. But years later, it's easy to take a shot at him and go, he's a scumbag. I don't know what he was like. He was nice to us on the show. Yeah. But a lot of people use that word, you know, crook, blah, blah, blah. And then, But I do remember when he s exited, a lot of fighters said, hey, man, you helped build Bellator. You gave mm -hmm. me a chance. You gave me a job, this, that, whatever. And I remember looking at some names going, wow, I didn't expect that. Maybe they're just being classy in the moment. Did I? Who knows? I don't remember what you said. But, but uh, what, uh, what no. are your thoughts on him? I mean, I don't know. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter – in in a in a professional re in a professional relationship, it's I mean it's not easy. You're gonna butt heads. I mean, my manager and him butted heads and yelled at each other and cussed each other out and made sure I got the best contract and I was and I was uh, taken care of and and we disagreed on some things. But that's business. I mean, every single one of the guys in the UFC can say that about you know Dana White and, and all those guys because that's you're you're negotiating, and it's not always a win-win situation. But for me, um, Bjorn Bjorn did a good job. For, since the inception in 2008 until I think what was it 2012 I think he exited 2013 maybe um, you know he him and Tim Danaher 
built a good company, great company, and um, as far as far as my dealings with him, I was always he was just a, he was a fight fight promoter, and you know they got to look out for their best interests, and we have to look out for ours. And I think he was an all right guy, and it's, it was interesting to see him kind of go, uh, you know, AWOL for two years. Nobody heard him from him at all, you know, and then now here he is coming back with the fighter union thing. Who are the best fight? Who are the best three lightweights in the world? UFC, Bellator, World Series, one championship, wherever. Name them. Um, me and Connor, and uh, I think Khabib. Khabib. I think Khabib is. I think Khabib is a problem. For Connor, for you, for anyone. I think he's a Connor. I think he's. A, I think he's a problem for anyone in the entire world. Mm -hmm. um, he's a big problem for Connor. Um, I mean, he'd he'd be a he'd be a problem for me too. Yeah. You know, he's he's a, he's a tough guy, and he know he. You're pretty tight with Michael Johnson now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you kind of felt that a little, like, damn, you got my yeah. teammate. Yeah. I mean, it was and and Michael Michael, you know, dotted his eyes and, and and crossed his t's, man. He he did a lot of, um, tried to do a lot of a lot of takedown defense and a lot of you know I mean, a lot of grappling escapes and all that kind of stuff. But when when Khabib gets on top of you, he rides that wrist and he's he's just just wrestling. The cool thing about the the thing I'm a fan of when when I watch Khabib is he's just wrestling. You know, it's so cool to see him pick you up, and put you, put him down, ride a wrist, and you know, butt drag and pressure, and it's just it's just like wrestling. You know, so it's it's just cool to see the sport of wrestling translate over, and then it just so happens in this sport you can punch. Yeah. So. I want to talk about one more thing before you leave. Emotions, okay? We know roughly what Dominic Cruz is going through now, but. Yourself, being his friend, being a training partner, what are your emotions like? We're getting closer and closer to that fight. Are you yeah. starting to get that pit in your stomach? Yeah, I, I mean, I get nervous. You know, I, I get nervous. There's there's a, a few people in this sport, a few guys in the sport that I that I care about a lot, and Dominic is definitely one of them. So you, I mean, my wife too. Like, we're, we're both already talked about this morning how it's fight day. We're going to start getting nervous, and it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's one of those things where, I'm so confident in his abilities. I was just talking to him. You know, he called me just I, when I, le I stepped away from the show. And I was just telling him I'm just so confident in his abilities. And so it's not a nervousness like, you know, I think he's going to lose. I think he's going to win the fight. But it's just it's such a it's such a crazy m roller coaster of just it's a it's a it's a tornado inside there, you know. And he's fighting a guy who can who has knockout power and. As as prepared as you are, you can always slip on the banana peel, and and you're you're daring you're um, you're daring greatly out there in in the octagon in front of millions of people, and you're chancing humiliation, you're chancing you know losing half your paycheck, and you're chancing so many crazy things, you know. So it's it's a crazy sport, man. It's it's awesome. Um, it's awesome at times. It's sucky at times, but you know it's days like today when you you get to feel that exhilaration of holy cow i love this guy i'm excited for him to go out there and, and lay it all on the line so you kind of get nervous you know so now i know it's days like this when i know what my wife goes through and, and my mom and my family you know and, and my close friends but um it's exciting were the were those the last words that you will speak to him before the fight or will you get some more in no i, th I think so yeah i mean he's probably gonna I'm um, just chill out. I mean, I told him I'm. I got my phone on me ready. You know, if he needs to call or text or whatever. But no, I mean, he's good, man. He's done this 23 times or whatever. He's he's the most confident he's ever been. He's he's uh, he's confident in his abilities and he's a confident he's confident in this matchup. You know, so it's just cool to see see the see a man grow. You know, it's I've seen a, a maturation process. I've seen a growth a growth of Dominic over the last you know four or five years, and it's the stuff he's had to go through. He's he's a light to so many people. I mean, the man the man eats, sleeps, and breathes this sport, and it got taken away from him. And uh, you know, now here he is, champion again, and and arguably pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world. And he's and he's and the way that he does it is so uh, it's just like elegant violence in there. You know, he just moving and angles and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's cool to see him grow. I want to thank all of our guests for the week: Ali Abdelaziz, T.J. Dillashaw, Marvin Vittori, Eric Del Fiero. Lewis Smolka, Alex Garcia, Dan Tom, Max Holloway, Brian Butler, Jessica Andrade, Tim Means, and Michael Chandler. Thanks for stopping by the studio and co-hosting. Thank you guys for having me. It's been we'll a see blast. You guys. Yeah, it's been good. Thank you guys for having me. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys tonight at the fights. Folks, keep it locked on MMA Junkie throughout the weekend as we cover UFC 207 and World Series of Fighting 34. 
UFC 207 tonight is a pay-per-view, and WSOF 34 it can be seen on NBC Sports tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget about those guys. They got four world title fights. It should be uh, an epic card to end the year. Danny, great job as always. Thank you very much for your contributions. Goes, you were pretty outstanding yourself. Oh, I took not. it to another level. Though. I was fantastic. You guys are great. All right, we're out of here, folks. Enjoy your weekend. We will see you all on Monday when we recap the fights. Until then, go out there, be safe, and be champions. Happy New Year.